Hey, 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 what is going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of AdventureCast, the podcast that revolves around AQW and everything AE. I am your host, Lanky, and joined with me here, as always, is Thread. Hey. How are you doing, Thread? I'm doing pretty well. I have um, the taste of crab in my mouth because crab. I'm eating sushi. And, oh, really? uh, yeah. What kind of sushi are you eating? It's called the volcano roll. It's like, um, okay. I honestly did not expect, like, know what I was going to get, but I went to this, uh, sushi place last night mm-hmm. and i started off with some ramen okay. and i thought they're gonna bring me like a small roll of sushi mm-hmm. but this thing ended up filling up an entire like large plate really so yeah i had to bring this home there was no way i was eating that at the place do you highly recommend it is it 10 out of 10 good the sushi is 10 out of 10 good yeah okay it oh, was yeah. the the restaurant itself was pretty small uh-huh. so that's kind of like minus points for that but okay they did a pretty good job well i'll have to try that i just got done eating a big double cheeseburger from a restaurant called culver's i don't know if you guys have that where you are no um we don't have that but it's pretty good but th- today is a very exciting episode because it's been a while since we've had a guest on this show and we have one for this episode i'm very excited to be having the pleasure with thread of interviewing Alfred, who is a comic book um, artist. Hello. What's going on, Alfred? Hey, man. How's stuff? Thanks for having me. Of course. In your podcast. It's of course. Awesome. Thank you for giving us the time to talk your ear off and, and pick your brain and ask you questions. I'm very excited. I've seen, I, but when I first made my Twitter account, I I don't know how I I stumbled upon your account uh, a while like a, a while ago. Oh, my account. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I was like, I I don't know. I think because. You 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 know you'd post things about AQW and and all that, and then other people would retweet mm-hmm. it, and then I would see it, and I'm like, I keep seeing this Alfred guy. Like, who is this guy? And I look, I'm like, oh my gosh, he's yeah, like a real Alfred guy. Yeah, who's this Alfred guy? Like, so I checked out the profile, and I'm like, wow, this guy's a really good artist. This is insane. This is really good stuff. Um, so I've known about you for uh quite some time, never thinking that one day I would interview you. So that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, actually. Yeah, because I'm really, really a big fan of this game, you know? Yeah. Like, back in 2010, 2011, like, I've started, yeah. like, doing some fan arts. But really? Fan arts, like, you know, yeah, fan arts. Nice. Uh, For Tendu Nomazo, I think that's my first AQ World character that I did. Mm-hmm. So, it was, like, a scribbly from, yeah, mm-hmm. Windows Paint, kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. So, when you uh started... Okay, so how about this? When you started doing those fan arts, um, was that was that like after you had played the game for some time, and then you're like, I'm gonna do some fan arts about this, or was it kind of like you started playing the game and you're like, oh, I'm gonna do art like right away? Yeah, kind of like that. I'm gonna do art like right away because I'm like, ha- I do, I do have this, you know, mm-hmm. this interest on how the characters are, how the designs are, you know, how mm-hmm. epic they look. So it kind of inspires me and adds a bit of a, a passion, flame of passion. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like that. Kind of like, it's like instantly, I was like, I'm going to draw this character because it looks cool. Kind of like that. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I know there's a, mm-hmm. I've always, I've always thought that, that there's, it's something about the way the characters look um, and the armors and the weapons and um, all the different, just all the different art in AQ, uh, AQW is incredible mm-hmm. and and i including all their other games too um but especially aqw that's the one i'm most familiar with and that's the one i love the most and the art is incredible and the the yes, villains and absolutely the, and the heroes it, it's something just so, so new like such a breath of fresh air of this different style of, mm-hmm. of art true um and then some of the art i've seen of years i'm like it, it was it was like a whole new take on um on on those and i was like this is because you know i'm i'm not I'm not uh, artistically inclined <laughs> yeah. at all, so like I just I uh-huh. love to see other people's work, and I'm like, oh, that's so good. Like, oh, I love it because <laughs> I'm like, I wish I could do that. Like, that's so good though. Um, yeah. And your style though is is incredible. If anyone hasn't checked it out, I highly recommend it. If you like comic mm-hmm. books, you know, like me, like I've I've read comic books, but I'm not like a huge comic book guy. But I lo- I appreciate the art that goes into it. Mm-hmm. And um yep. and the skill and the technique and the and the just the whole process is incredible to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's quite you know, let's say 
let's say comic books, Western comic books. It's like mm-hmm. different to the eyes of other people because you know people tend to let's say watch anime. You know mm-hmm. they're more of an Eastern side of the culture. Right. It's like different from the Western side you know, of of how comics are. You know. Yeah. It's like. It's more, let's say, it's it really hits childhood to me, you know, because mm-hmm. I pursue this style because my grandfather used used to collect those comic books when I was just when I was just a kid, mm-hmm. you know, collect yeah. this like Sergeant Rocks, X Men nineties, the Jim Lee, the Jim Lee X Men, yeah, yeah, I like that. So I tend to like imitate or mimic the style. That's why I keep like innovating evolving and how to make this more of a profession and how this thing works you know yeah so that's why it's quite it's quite new it's quite it's like not not, not new but different different to the eye it has a different style different uh aura mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah 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 that's incredible i like that I, I, mm-hmm. I, it was it's funny that you bring up anime i was gonna ask like comic books and and like manga mangas excuse me are um are are like the same idea like it's 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 just a story through pictures and um yeah and and i've noticed that they are two completely different art styles um yeah but they're they're but they're sharing different yeah and they're sharing like the same the same goal in in Mm -hmm. making the reader feel a certain way and get attached to characters and it's so incredible i've i don't know like anime like mangas and anime in general just it looks so cool and then i look at comic books and i'm like this is also really incredible yeah both are awesome they are i mean it's because the culture probably like evolves it in a different i mean you know things take steps through the years and everything evolves into something you know mm-hmm. kind of it's like the culture from japan you know yeah it makes everything unique. They have they have this these set of unique styles that make manga great, you know. Right. Like anime and how they on how they make their stories, how to make interesting characters. I mean, it's the same as western comic books, mm-hmm. Marvel, DC, Image Comics. Yeah. They're all the same but different art style, you know? Yeah, and it it seems whoever Excuse me, I don't know the history on comic books or, or mangas, but That's whoever, okay. you know, whoever uh first started it or discovered it, they they found something that works and then other people discovered it and then put their own twist on it and kind of passed mm-hmm. it down the line. And and we all kind of came together, found something that we all enjoy and that works, and everyone just takes their own kind of unique look at it and, and kind of mm-hmm. dips their pen into the uh <clears throat> excuse me into the history yep. of comics which is a beautiful thing it's incredible it's awesome i mean they're they're a completely different thing you know but yeah the same feels and everything but just the art style is different right they have the they're unique you know mm-hmm. i like manga i i once tried to learn how to draw but i never pursue it because for me i don't think it's like my forte my you know my it doesn't feel home you know mm-hmm because my my parents, I mean especially my grandfather, who influenced me to this mm-hmm. uh, environment of something wonderful. I mean something wonderful, majestic, and yeah, it it's really it entertains me. It piques my interest, you know. Well, that's good. It's good. It gets me in trouble sometimes to like <laughs> draw on my notes. Right. When I was at school, but. Yeah, it's like drawing Wolverine and stuff. And like my mom said, "Oh, what are you doing?" Kind of like that. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I was gonna say, did you did you do that kind of stuff? Like in school, you're kind of just doodling on I your mean, on your, note, on your notepads, or just you have a, a whole notebook yep. that you just it's dedicated just to doodles and scribbles and just drawing mm, in yes. general. Yeah, I was I was like uh, imagining uh, because X Men was like my first uh, my first series that I read mm-hmm. that I've read. So basically, I like when I was like in fifth grade, I think uh, my mom actually scolded me because I took half of my notebook or like there, there's like full, uh, full lore of making my own mutant, uh-huh. you know, mutant X Men. That's so there's cool. Like doing some, yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course, that's awesome. It was, it was, it was weird. Like there's like killing and stuff. My yeah. mom's like, "Why are you doing? Why you have these things? You know, why are there like people?" D- doing some gruesome stuff in your notes i was like oh, mom because i this is like from the comic that my yeah my grandpa gave me kind of like that right it's a funny thing it is sometimes they also like um the older generations don't 
understand fully stuff like that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like if you're doing something that really you can um, enjoy and uh, and you can uh, kind of express yourself in some way and you have fun doing it and you're passionate about it. Um, yeah, they might not understand it, but it it's working for you. You're able to kind of put it out there and let mm-hmm. other people around the whole world see it, which obviously it never used to be that easy. We no, we didn't always have the luxury of being able to create things and, and put them out into the world. Yeah. And then instantaneously, mm-hmm. hundreds of people could see it, you know, it, it yep. so we're, we're very fortunate in that. And it, and it allows mm-hmm. new and upcoming artists of whatever medium it might be but it, it allows them to come out and, and and share their their work with with the world which I, it's in, it's a, an amazing thing there's this let's see a contagious uh inspiration what i call whenever i i draw stuff i put it on twitter facebook or whatever yeah people like see my stuff you know yeah it was like, wow, this is awesome. And then like, there's like people like in the next few days that the guys who like my stuff mm-hmm. actually draws for the first time. I'm like, oh, man, keep the, keep this up. I like this. Exactly. I like that. Yeah. You, you can it's also inspire. It. Yeah, you can inspire. It, it, that was a really good way of saying yeah. a contagious inspiration. Because um, mm-hmm. one, one person will put something out and you'll just, it's it, you can't, it's something that I've figured out. You can't really explain in words. You just kind of feel it. You're like. I have this yeah, this this fire, this spark to to want to do this, and I'm gonna do it. Mm-hmm. And you know, you just got to do it. If, if and you'll you'll figure yeah. it out if it's something that you want to do or something that you're that you're yeah. good at. It makes it feels yeah, yeah, it feels people, you know. Yeah, it brings it brings mm-hmm. uh, people together, and it's great. So continuing on, um, I guess I guess we'll continue on the uh the path of of comic books that we're headed down. Let's let's rewind time to like young All Alfred. Right. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let's go Alfred. way back. When did when did Alfred first start um, drawing, or when did when did you discover like, you know what, I'm gonna do this, and oh wow, I'm actually really good at this. And it, it, when did you start your your kind of art life path? All right, this has some lessons to it. I'm go the words I'm about gonna uh, like the words I'm that I'm about gonna say or something kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the thing is, it started. When I was just like, let's say, when I was like a toddler, you know. Mm-hmm. So my dad was a, I mean my dad, my grandfather was a uh, World War II vet and a oh, wow. surgeon okay. and stuff. So, yeah, so he tends to collect this uh, Sergeant Rock from, I think that this is Marvel Comics now, Sergeant Rock. Okay. It's a World War II vet. It's like a World War II vet that is like the uh, the Terminator for I mean not not Terminator but the Rambo it has that Rambo story thing yeah I think I yeah but I, I'm not really that uh, knowledgeable when it comes to Sergeant Rock but mm-hmm. anyhow so the comics he collected he gave those to me so those comics that I started doing it's like I tend to like open some pages I see I see like people with some good stands some good epic shots mm-hmm. and scenes whatever. I tend to like get a bond paper, like a paper, just a, you know, a thin one that you can like see what's below. Oh, you know, you know like I, a, you know like a, I mean? uh, like a tracing paper almost. Yeah. Like uh, a tracing paper. Gotcha. Almost. So I uh, grab my, my pencil and start tracing them. Yeah. You know, sometimes tracing is a good way to practice drawing too. It's like training wheels. Yeah, you're riding this tri bike, you know, the bike with the training wheels and stuff. So basically, you're gonna start like tracing and tracing until you get the hang of it. Until I learn how to draw without, you know, tracing stuff. The first, I I think I remember the first hero that I tried to draw is like Wolverine. He's my favorite, you know. He's awesome. Like Batman is my favorite today. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, it's Batman. No, anyways, so I draw Wolverine, and I I tend to use uh, ballpoint pen. So mm-hmm. if I use pencil, I tend to like uh, erase some mistakes and whatnot. Yeah. So when I, when the so when I'm using some a, a ball pen a ballpoint pen, it tends to give me uh, it trains my precision and accuracy to do stuff to draw and how the shading works, the hatchings and everything. So it kind of makes it 
permanent. You know, you can't erase it. Yeah, I was gonna it, say it. Only it, it gives yeah. it that. It's it's final. You know. Yeah, it's 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 final. It gives me that accuracy. That that's probably one of my my training grounds because this thing is self thought. You know, mm-hmm. I don't. I really can't explain fully and how I did it and how I made it this far. But right. you know, it's just I I can say it. It came from tracing. Yeah, and that make the the analogy you said about the training wheels. It's it's very simple way to look at it, but it's also true. Um, yeah, that you, you, we start we start from the small things. You yeah, know? you got to start somewhere. I feel like the tracing also helps you just like like you were saying. It helps you learn just different ways. It 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 almost makes me think like it it helps you learn different ways of thinking of of drawing mm-hmm. a cer- like a character right mm-hmm. like you'll be like wow i didn't you're looking at it and you're I, I didn't even think of of drawing that that way to get you know that emotion from that character yep. and now y- you try to train that and build that skill stronger you know because when i was just a kid i really can't draw uh let's say out without tracing because comics tend to have this complex thing when it comes to anatomy okay yeah i think anatomy yeah anatomy yeah for shortening perspective it's it's difficult and how you do that when you're just like you don't know the proper rules and stuff so yeah Mm -hmm. doing tracing really helps you big time because you can't do it without you know the proper basic steps you have to learn the basic steps to do those kind of stuff to do more complex stuff when it comes to you know doing professional comic books Mm -hmm. you have to learn those kind of steps yeah i'm gonna put this out there just so i don't forget uh we're when you when you (laughs) mentioned batman earlier i have questions about uh batman oh batman for for, for later on i want i want to hear your opinion Mm -hmm. and thoughts on something um okay do you also work on like a uh i don't Excuse me, I don't know the name of what it is, but it's one of those like digital drawing tablets. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, digital drawing tablets. Yeah, uh, I, I know there's a pen tab. Yeah. Okay. So what what's it like going from drawing from on paper and trying to kind of translate to drawing on that digital tablet? Because I feel like that that would almost be weird on the brain. Because to me, it's like with the with the paper, you can physically feel the pen against the paper. You can feel what you're drawing, yeah, but true. the tablet, yeah, you can feel like the the pen going across the screen on the tablet. But it's also, mm-hmm. I feel like I don't know. I feel like it'd almost be like a, a weird thing you have to kind of train your brain to, yeah. and uh, and kind of almost quickly relearn your previous knowledge of drawing, but to translate it to, to digital. What's that like? From transitioning to paper to tablet is quite like weird at first, you know. Mm-hmm. You have to to try to let's say take some time to feel everything. You know, because there's like a separation from screen to tablet. Yeah. To pen tablet, you know, kinda like that. Mm-hmm. So it's it's quite weird, but at at the end game here, I mean the the thing is your style is still there. Your your talent is still there, but you're still you need to have to to adjust to a new environment, kind of like that. It's like a new town, going to town, and something right. trying to uh, yeah run around and make uh, recognize uh, recognize some some buildings, you know, yeah. kind of like that. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's all about you know feeling everything, feel uh, to start you know to start doing stuff. You just, you need to like consistently draw. On those ta- on the tablet, so it's 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 basically it's it's weird at first, you know. It's weird at first, but yeah, when you get the hang of it, it's like it's easy now. It's just practice, keep on practicing, doing same stuff over and over again, so you get the hang of it. Yeah, I think that's it. I'm also curious about um your routine for drawing, like kind of um like how often do you draw? Like how many hours a day? Like how much time do you put into um oh. uh, into it because i also i also feel that you know with anything if you do it too much and you kind of let it consume you you can almost go crazy you kind of need to split it up so you can allow yourself yeah. to you know just have that break and um mm-hmm. kind of mentally recollect yourself so you can get focused back on what you're doing because i feel if you mm-hmm. repetitively do something every single day for hours and hours on end you'll start to kind of 
make mistakes because you're just so like I need to I need to back up for a second and relook at this from a mm-hmm. different angle because I feel like if you do that you might come back to it with a whole new outlook and you're like I have a whole different way that I I want this to look and you'll change it and then you'll create something even better than what you were previously drawing. I tend to burn myself a lot, you know. Yeah. I tend to burn myself a lot, really, really bad, to the point that like I'm gonna stop doing this by thinking that oh, I need to I need to live kind of like that. Right. So, yeah. I tend to I tend to work from you know let's say when I have a schedule or de- or a deadline from 8 a.m. up to freaking let's say 10 p.m. Mm-hmm. just continuous drawing. I tend to for like forget to eat lunch or I'm just gonna eat at the morning kind of like that. Yeah. Some eggs and you know some couple of uh, pans. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So I have to like sharpen my mind and focus on something because if I if I miss that day of drawing yeah. it will give a very bad uh, ripple effect when it comes to my deadline yeah I have to like chase that you know I understand it's, that it, yeah yeah I, I completely let's understand say that. let's say yeah yeah it's really it's really difficult you know doing professional comic books that's why I tend to get only some gigs or projects that are related to coloring because mm-hmm. Those stuff are like, it's for me, coloring is really, it's really easy for me. I don't know why, because I started working in this industry by coloring professional comics in a, in a indie company from, uh, I think it's from uh, Denver, Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From a guy from Denver. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's quite sensitive. The, the theme is quite sensitive. So I, I don't want to put some, uh, yeah, I got you. Some stuff to that. So coffee is like the important thing that needs in my body so oh, it can yes. keep on working. It gives me yeah. Oh yeah. It gives me that burst of energy, but when it comes to night, it will just makes my acid really bad. Right. <laughs> That's like my <laughs> routine for like how many years I'm doing this. I like I forgot, but mm-hmm. I, I think I've start started doing professional comics back in twenty fourteen. I yeah. Okay. But most of the twenty fourteen jobs that I did just covers and mm-hmm. and coloring. So I started this uh, inking, I mean, the with the arts in probably 2015, 2016, you know, kind of like that. That started my, jump-started everything, mm-hmm. you know. The, the coffee thing, I totally understand that. Co- Coffee's just... Yeah, it gives oh, me the, the adrenaline <laughs> to do everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, something about it. Just like, a... But it burns you out at mm-hmm. night, man. It's like, I'm, I'm like uh, squeezing all of my creative juices for the day. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And then just, you know, coffee makes me bad at night, too. (laughs) (laughs) I understand that. Drives my acid crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's weird. Oh, yeah. Another thing that I kind of, I kind of tend to do this myself, um, because I do, Mm -hmm. I I do photography, like, as just, like, my passion, like a hobby. Um, So, I always tend to, I'll edit, like, a photo, and I'll tend to always go back, and I'll keep changing little things, and it's almost hard for me to, like be done with it because i'm like ah, i could change this there's so many more things i could change to make it you know better um so basically the question is like how much revision on your on your pieces or and like editing do you do on your work do you ever have those days where you'll be done and you're like all right i'm done it's finished and then you'll wake up the next day and be like hold on like i'm gonna I, i need to i'm gonna change one thing really quick when it comes to my work uh I tend to follow scripts that indicates what to do in this panel. So I tend to do this thing accurately without doing my own terms on me. I mean, putting my own uh, own terms on that panel. I have to follow those scripts so that there's no like revisions. I'm really, I really hate revisions to be honest. Mm -hmm. It's quite, it, it, it kind of makes my task, my day to day task gonna, Gonna cause hindrance to my task, kind of like that. So, so doing those, it's it's quite you know, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I want to take a second. I just re- I just totally realized without thinking, we've already been recording for thirty minutes. I totally like hijacked this this uh, oh, okay. interview. I, I've been eating my sushi. Okay. So it's completely fine. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say throw it. You... Eat well, man. Is there, is there anything you want to say? I just realized I've totally been just going off the rails with Alfred. <laughs> I just realized that you've been like yeah, yeah, silent the whole right, time. Yeah, yeah I, I've been sitting here eating my sushi. Uh, I I do have some like comments, but 
Okay. Like, uh, what's your comment? Yeah, let's thread? hear. What's your comment thread? So when you said that you burned yourself a lot, uh, do you mean that like you messed up and that ended up uh, coming back to bite you in the butt? Or no, it's kind of like I tired myself a lot, kind of like that. So I don't do breaks because I am trying to uh, uh, to grind every day just to to get that you know the deadline to that achievement. So I cannot so I cannot have this uh, multiple projects I'm gonna juggling per day. So I need to do scheduling perfectly and right because just one mistake or one it will like add interference with my other projects because I don't do only one project I do like many stuff mm. just to like to, to live I mean it's it's fashion it's fashion not fashion it's passion <laughs> passion <laughs> yeah fashion right so yeah it's fashion that drives me the, to this but you know just it's it's quite difficult in a way because it's it's unhealthy because I don't really look up to my eating habit that much anymore mm-hmm. because I tend to look at the clock always and it's bad in a way it's I mean if you can handle this stuff that don't eat like lunch or breakfast I mean you can start working then it's probably it's, it's just practice you I think I I get used to it eventually yeah but it's it's a bad it's a bad thing to be yeah. honest right another thing up. it's not good yeah Another thing that I, I thought to, was like, kind of have interesting. This, like, a break, yeah. Another thing that I thought was kind of interesting is uh, drawing and writing went from originally being on tablets to mm-hmm. going onto paper, which is now mm-hmm. back on tablets. Which I think is kind of we made the full course, you know, what's going to be the mm-hmm. next paper. So yeah. I next think it's paper. kind of interesting that uh, yeah. a lot of artists nowadays do use the uh, digital tablets. Mm-hmm. Definitely. It means it's easy, man. Yeah. You know, when it comes to paper, you have to do some processing and stuff. You have to scan it. You know, because when, let's say you're drawing a full-pledged comic book. You're going to have that A3 size paper to get all the details. A3 is large, very large. You'll have a hard time finding a good scanner. I mean, a, a big a big scanner that can fit a, an A3 size. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't just, you can't just draw in an A4 paper because you know Marvel. When it comes to standards, when it comes to like a comic industry, mm-hmm. Marvel and DC in uh, in general requires you to draw in a big paper, A3 size. It's probably, it's I think it's the the standard one, mm-hmm. the standard size. Yeah, with uh, uh, DPI or dots per inches. I think mm-hmm. it has. It needs to be like 300 and stuff. So. If you find a paper that's like a big A3 size, you'll be you'll have a hard time doing scanning and stuff. No. Oh yeah, I can imagine. It's recommended because yeah, it's recommended because uh, we need to get to capture all the details, like the small hatchings and stuff, the speck of dust, and mm-hmm. you know, in every comics, it adds fee- it ha- it adds it adds organicness. Hey, organicness is a word. Yeah, uh, no. that works. Yeah, yeah, it adds kind of like that. So it's like recommended. It, uh-huh. Yeah, must have, must need to draw in an A3 size paper. I didn't even mm-hmm. didn't even know that about the whole A3 paper and all that. Yeah, that's really cool. It has to be big, yeah, a, a big paper. Yeah, I want to talk about. Let's say okay. So uh, aside from you doing um, like like uh gigs and stuff like that, like if you create your own. Just your own personal comic. Um, that's kind of just like a little passion project mm-hmm. that you do. I want to. I want this. This will be interesting to me. Do you write like a uh, almost like a, a quick storyboard or like a script for a story that you want to tell, or is it kind of you you start to draw the first panel, you have a basic idea in your head of what you want, and then you kind of come up with the story as you go. You'll find this interesting though. So there's a running series, a series of uh, events and stories that are going through my head. Just one, this is like a one single storyline that's been running for like years already in my head. Mm-hmm. There's like a series of uh, another series by series. It's kind of like that. A new episode every day. I kind of imagine it and how it goes. I still remember how it ended like last night, so I tend to continue it in my on my brain. Yeah. Kind of like that to the, for the next day. Mm-hmm. So 
it's kind of like my let's say my goal what am i go i haven't made any personal comic book yet or i haven't uh write anything yet so it's it's something that i'll uh, i've been looking forward to do mm-hmm. uh sometime in the future but not now because okay. i'm i don't have really have the the time to do those stuff it's it's i want to be per- i want it to be perfect you know yeah you kind of like, you take a lot of pride in it, yep, so you want it, so you want I, to make sure it's it's good, and then it's it's almost like you'll work on it and it's done when it's done because mm, that's yeah. when you'll it, you'll be happy with it and you'll be settled on it, you know. Mm, mm-hmm, I get that. True. Yeah, mm-hmm. I tend to archive those characters in my brain, so I actually still remember them from the past years that I tried to imagine them, daydream them. Mm-hmm. So it's just a matter of when to write it in on paper pen and paper i like that that's cool yeah that is interesting mm-hmm. i think that the whole process of um kind of imagining and formulating a story in your head for a character or and just coming mm-hmm. up with a character just out of the blue out of nowhere no one's ever seen this character before coming up with it in your head and the way they look the way they sound um you know the where they're from giving them a whole backstory i think that is such a cool thing um yeah every every character in my head has a backstory yeah. to be honest i'm not i'm not kidding it's like oh, i believe it they're, they're yeah yeah they're it's quite you know it's probably unusual to an individual to see to you know to imagine you know how how does it play that you know right i mean uh, the brain is an interesting thing you know it is it stores yeah I can Im- I can imagine writing them uh, something in the future, but yeah, I'm actually excited for that day. So for your whole time um, drawing and creating um, uh, all this all this art and comic book art, are there any other um, how how do I, how can I say this? Are there any other artistic like mediums that you're attracted to like when are there any other ways any ah, any other forms of creating art that you're attracted to like do you see like do you see like oh i just you know i saw this a video of some guy sculpt 3d sculpting something in blender or something and that looks really cool like are there any other forms of art that you kind of have your eye on that you'd like to try one day and maybe so here's a here's a funny story okay so back in uh conquest there's a com- comic con event uh, here in my place uh, back in last two years ago so i kind of started that year also on how to make uh clay and stuff oh nice I like that yeah so so i made Venom and Spawn, you know Spawn from Image Comics. Really? Yeah, it's it's he's, he's like a undead Batman, kind of like that. Okay. He's a cool guy, from Todd McFarlane. Yeah. All right. Uh, McFarlane size. So, so I made a a sculpture. I don't know if I have the pictures of it. It's on my Instagram, I think. I have. I still have those pictures. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the process of doing those, you know, because I I I have knowledge on doing anatomy and stuff. So I made a. Uh, two of them. I made a bust version of them. You know, just a half, yeah, uh, half body version. Yeah. Right. It's like so from I, the upper I, chest up, like to the head, kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It took me. It took me about two weeks to finish them both mm-hmm. in, I think, uh, three inch size. I didn't know to myself that I can do this stuff. I made them exclusive in my booth. Mm-hmm. People freaking bought it. You know, nice. I never expected. I made a packaging to it. I made everything. I made like a foil. Uh, you know, no way. Th- like a Funko Pop. Yeah, I made a Funko Pop box to it. Nice. It's like a bust work of art. Yeah. By me, by mine. So I was like, I'm happy that I did it. It's like an achievement, like or a trophy that I did. So it's just funny that I don't have it anymore. <laughs> People right. already own it. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's just yeah. That is cool. My stuff. So it sounds like maybe maybe like sculpting could could be another yeah, another Yeah, I I'm interested in sculpting. Yeah. Because I've seen some stuff, you know those Naruto uh uh toys, mm-hmm. you know the figures and stuff that doing this has this like details and stuff and mm-hmm. everything is just so fragile and oh, prestige. Yeah. It's like I want to achieve those. Like that would be 
driving my passion to yeah. do more kind of like that so mm-hmm. I'm gonna go back to to sculpting soon when I have like clay and stuff it's kind of like my zen yeah my zen yeah mm-hmm. my zen area kind of like that yeah man I, <laughs> I, I we had to sculpt something when I was in high school or something in art class that, that was hard it wasn't it wasn't good but it was I was like man this is you know what, hard what clay are you seeing the, the red ones I, I think so I I don't remember. I remember we had to we had to like fire it in a kiln, um, oh. and all that. It was it, I, I, it was like a reddish brown clay, and we just oh yeah, you, you, you know. have to bake those. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We painted them and stuff. It, it was cool, but I was like, man, I when it made me like those spots. You know what I realized when you when you see like a work of art, like a sculpture, or you see mm-hmm. a painting, or uh, yeah. in this case, like a like a comic book panel, you look at it and you're like, man, that looks really cool. And then if you try and go and do that, you gain a greater appreciation for it because you're like, that is hard. That is not yeah, easy. It's really difficult. It, it made me appreciate the, the art of sculpting way more. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, I was like, it requires <laughs> precision. I, 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 really I was like, oh, my. I was like, huge amount of, huge amount of time. This yeah. is insane how people like do yeah. this and get that much detail and make everything look like like autonomously like uh, like correct everything looks perfect mm-hmm. i'm like what <laughs> i had trouble just making a no, little the, like the, a little the Greeks head and romans yeah <laughs> yeah they make things perfectly yeah. yeah it's it's beautiful we need people like that to be able to do that for us i i, I think i use uh, air dry clay okay when i did the sculpting yeah it's kind of like automatic dry mm-hmm. so like i have learned this pers- the, this method that you know sometimes air dry clay cracks okay it cracks so badly it becomes so brittle and like your your stuff gonna go down the drain mm-hmm. kind of like that so it's it's more of a you know still practice when it comes to drawing still practice until you get a hang of it I like that like don't give up yeah I, it's it a is thing. it's like it the, is, mo- the, the, the magic word don't give up it is actually like, keep, as keep simple as that don't give up just mm-hmm. keep True. doing it like it yeah, you're gonna. If you fail, you're do gonna it again. fail. Yeah, of course. Like you're gonna fail. You can never succeed in something unless you fail. You need to know what mm. failure feels like to yeah succeed, true. um, in in whatever it is you're doing. That that if that's one thing anyone who's listening can take away from this whole entire episode is just don't give up. <laughs> just keep going. Yeah, keep doing it. Just keep going. <laughs> oh, that like, Dory yeah, just keep swimming. <laughs> I'm just swim, swimming, <laughs> man. Damn. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, when it comes to like your art, um, mm-hmm. what, what is more important to you when creating it? Is it, is it the style of, of your art or is it the idea that went into that piece? You know, it's quite difficult. I do, when you, when you say about the, those stuff, mm-hmm. I tend to, when it comes to like, for me, you know, the style, are we talking about style, right? The style. Yeah. Y- yeah. It's very difficult in how I, the process, the process is. So, uh, so in terms of personal stuff, mm-hmm. I do my drawings really slowly, and you know when it comes to commission. So that's basically inclined to like a personal one. Mm-hmm. So it, it, I, I draw really slow on those. So I, I want it to be perfect. I want it to be, you know, to look cool, to look legit. Of course. Okay. So, yeah, when it comes to, uh. The business side, the to professional comic books. So, when it comes to making panels or making characters, I tend to cheat a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I get like images in in Google and just and just like trace like how I explain it uh, uh, a while ago. So I tend to trace it so to make things a lot quicker. So it kind of it kind of let's say uh, I don't I don't think it's true, but it's like. It's just how you uh, express everything to make it faster. Okay. It's a different method. It's got, it's, it's probably a, a method thing mm-hmm. or a technique. Right. It's not actually a cheat, but a technique to do it more faster. But when, when it comes to like personal stuff, my style will be probably make it a little bit slower to make it perfect. You know, give it time. Right. Give it time to grow to make it beautiful. I like that. Another thing that seems interesting to me is, and, and I, I want to hear what you have to say about this, but when you say you're creating, um, let's just say 
you're creating your own your own piece of art and you're what, wherever the character is that you came up with and you're populating the mm-hmm. world around it. Um, do you ever kind of take inspiration from like a life from things like you've seen and you kind of implement those into your work? Like maybe let's just say like just complete example. Um, say the, the character you just created, he's in a world and in the background it's populated with some people and, and you draw like one certain person in the background that you saw on the side of the road or at the store and you're like that's like a cameo that guy looks kind of interesting to me i'm gonna like implement him into this world and like give him his own like little design like do you ever draw from life mm-hmm. and and kind of put that into uh, your work yeah uh there's this i think um back in my uh, my mom's apartment in 2015 mm-hmm. i did this uh cover for for a for a guy and somewhere I don't know I can't remember so it's a cover for um a comic project of ours mm-hmm. that I've tried we had a cat before an orange cat okay in my mom's apartment so those th- this this orange cat mm-hmm. you know it's quite clingy to me and everything so it's kind of like huh oh, I'm gonna put you somewhere so yeah. when it comes to my project I I tend to put this random stray cat oh wow. At the background, it's like random straight cat. It has like this courage to carry the dog eyes, kind of like grumpy all the time. Yeah, I was like, man, this is funny. Like my clients like saying, well, what, what, why is there a cat in here? I was like, I think it's like this. It's a funny thing. It's gonna, it's like there's like a cameo of some sort. Yeah, you know? it makes things interesting. Yeah, it adds quite a cherry on top when it comes to situation. When it comes to paneling comic books, it adds some sort of feels to it. You know, mm-hmm. it's like you need. I mean, there's like a bunch of people in a group and in a in a pa- on a panel, you have to put some sort of something organic to it, you know, like a like an alarm clock, a picture frame. For me, I'm gonna put that cat. Yeah, it kind of grounds it's it like in reality. Ish, ish, yeah, yeah, that's true. Gotcha. I like that. For people, I I don't I don't remember I've implemented mm-hmm. the ones I've seen in reality. So probably the cat. That's cool. The whole cat thing. That's really awesome. I visited your website, which is a really nice website, by the way. Uh, thank you. I will put that in the description. Everyone should go check it out. Um, yep. Thank it's you. A beautiful website. It's It's been run. It's it's run by like uh, three people uh-huh. that manages my website and my course. That is awesome. And I see like mm-hmm. on your homepage that like the brands that have featured your work and you got some yep. <laughs> really big things on here. DC, Artix. Adventure Coast Worlds, Long Beach Comic Con, LA Comic Con, Dark Wave. It's a lot of Yeah. That is that that's something you should be proud of. That is insane. And I see that you have courses. You have so much to offer. Mm-hmm. Which is yeah. really should be very inspiring to people. I don't know, man. I was looking yeah. through your website Lo- and lots of content. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your website is so professionally put together and I'm looking mm-hmm. at right now, I'm looking at uh, a, a piece of art on your website the batman who laughs mm-hmm. that is probably one of the sickest looking pieces of art i've ever seen that is so cool yep batman who that's probably one of my uh my one of my favorite thing that i did mm-hmm. batman who laughs like the tree robins it's actually a a comic series from dc okay it's like an elseworld or an mm-hmm. alternate universe kind of stuff yeah, so yeah, Batman Who Laughs made it like uh, around around the globe, not really around the globe, but you know, in Comic Cons and locally here, uh, oh, that is uh, Long Beach and yeah, and everything. That must feel it's, be, it's been to yeah. That must feel so. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. That must feel so like good and just to I don't know, man. That must feel amazing. Uh, my art manager tends to print those stuff, my works, because I can't really fly over for overseas to do cons or to do shows you know yeah so my manager tends to to print my works and then then sell it to comic cons there it's like my presence is still there that's you know? that's that must that also like, must like feel achievement yes definitely an achievement. Long, lo, yeah long beach comic con uh stanley's kamikaze los angeles comic con kind of like that it's like a really really good man it's like <laughs> well, I'm one of my achievements, yeah. That's awesome. So I actually sell those things here too. Yeah. And people like love it. That's awesome. I'm looking also at the Spider Man one with a uh, Venom behind him. Yeah. I've been selling that back Incredible. in like twenty seventeen, I think. Really? Yeah. 
It's like an icon exclusive for my work, Spider-Man and Venom. That is so good. I really enjoyed doing that because, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, I, I the Spider-Man Venom, if you notice, it has a different style. It's going to have that washed out ink. Yeah. It's kind of like a, yeah, it's kind of like an experimental thing that I did. I like, it's like, I, but I really like how it turned out though. Mm -hmm. And it sells like, and it like sells like pancakes and stuff. <laughs> so, it's awesome. Sells like yeah. pancakes. I love that. <laughs> that is, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, people like Spider-Man. I, oh, I, I love Spider-Man. Spider Man's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's been booming now because it, it has like a movie now. Yes. And you just now mentioning the movies actually is the perfect yeah, segue into Tom what Holland. I was going to ask you um, mm -hmm. about like right. when I told you to remember Batman. Um, what do you... Well, first off, before I get to it, what do you think of how the Marvel Universe is being portrayed like through movies like cinematically do you think it's doing justice to the comics like do you i don't know do you do you like it like do you do you think they're doing a good job yeah i think they're doing a good job because uh they inspire comics you know they mm -hmm. they get the characters and everything and uh but they tend to alter origins and stuff that is not that directly i mean that that, that didn't happen and the comics so basically disney disney marvel made their entire universe just for you know just for the cinematic one mm -hmm. it's quite interesting though but it no it it really works at the end of the day i really like it that's good it's enjoyable man that's that let's say end game and stuff yeah you know in the comics adam warlock uh came around and the beat beat Thanos, I think, but mm -hmm. you know the comics. It didn't happen. I mean, in the cinematic universe, it didn't happen. It just ended in a very sad but epic way. It's like it ends an entire, you know, yeah, entire line and a legacy that you know Iron Man brought in two thousand eight. I think. Yeah, I think the first one was Iron Man in two thousand eight. I think it was two thousand eight. Yeah, it's it jump started everything in the MCU. It's like. Man, I was like a, a young kid back there. Yeah. Uh, ba back there, back then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it's so amazing to see everything, like, just, you know, mm -hmm. compiles them at the end. Yeah. In this one massive movie that people, like, the majority loves. I mean, it's awesome. It's epic. It is epic. It's something, you know. Yeah. To, it's a good, good thing that you're... Yeah. It's something that actually inspires me to do more, you know. Mm -hmm. Those things fuels me. There's a couple of like the the comic book movies that I like. I remember I went into to see with my friend cuz him and I just we absolutely love movies. We we just we love studying movies and cinematography and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um and acting and whatnot. Uh I remember we we decided to go to the movies one day and we it was when Aquaman came out. Um and we oh, and we DC. went to go see Aquaman, and we're just kind of like, oh, this will this will probably be just fun, you know. And we came out, we we're like, that movie mm. was actually really good. <laughs> that, that movie yeah, was really good. The movie was cool. <laughs> I like it. I think honestly, you know, they I really did, want. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they did perfect go, casting. Go, go perfect casting with like Jason Momoa being Aquaman. That true it was. I, I, I that's all I can say is yeah. That was perfect casting. That's a prime example of it. What also is cool for me is like I I go into these movies kind of not knowing much. Uh, besides like mm -hmm. like maybe like when I see like Logan or when I see like Wolverines and stuff like that, I I kind of have an idea of what's going on like X Men and all that. But a lot of them I kind of mm -hmm. go in kind of have never read the comics. I kind of just mm -hmm. know basic things about it to get me through the movie and then i kind of learn from the movie so it's a really good feeling walking out and being like whoa that was a really good movie yeah you know because let's when you say when you say uh about the aquaman thing mm -hmm. uh it's funny that the casting's really good to the point that the comics you know the justice league comics made aquaman their long hair too usually really usually aquaman's like a short blonde yeah whoa they made it look like jason momoa i didn't know that believe it or not <laughs> that, that's like an awesome that, you know, thing that they did like i'm like wow that's interesting i mean aquaman is like cool like cool now it looks cooler i know i think everyone it looks more tough <laughs> yeah, yeah everyone saw him and they're like whoa 
<laughs> this guy, this guy yeah, is man. Aquaman. Like, he, he's really scary. Jason Momoa is really scary. Yeah, man. yeah, that guy's a giant. When the when the Joker movie came out, um, oh, that, Joaquin oh, Phoenix one. Man, yes. Oh man. Oh my gosh. Oh, I really Alfred, I could talk about that. this all day. This movie, man. <laughs> oh, that that was such a good movie. I it is. I saw it multiple times in theaters and I immediately bought it on Blu-ray when it came out. I was like, I find it cuz to me it, it seems like it's been so long since like a a movie has come out that's like such a powerful movie and so well planned and just shot yeah. and I'm like this is this is a, a a piece of cinema that will go down in history this is such they did such a good job Joaquin Phoenix when I heard that he was going to play the Joker I was like okay mm -hmm. I have to see it because I like the mm -hmm. characters he plays and he's so, he's and I don't mean this in an insulting way but he is so weird that yeah. <laughs> that He's perfect for that role. It's really, really scary, man. If DC keeps up with this momentum, mm -hmm. you know, from Aquaman, Joker, and to the new Suicide Squad. Yeah. Have you watched that? No, I haven't. Man, if... No. I need to Me watch too, that. actually. But, man, like, 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. Like, I mean, 94, 97? I don't... I think it's 97. Like, mm -hmm. freshly... Uh, certified fresh. I mean, if they keep the, the momentum going, like, DC... It'll eventually become Marvel, man. Yeah. In terms of you know success. Yeah, they're gonna take over. Yeah. Because I mean, Joker. It's like oh, my favorite one. Of my, it's like my favorite film right now. Yes. Yes. It's, it's really unique and it is it so unique. gives me chills every oh, time I watch so it. Yeah, it's so good. Really scary. It's so good. Yeah. The just yeah, it's not. It's not it, yeah, it's not the typical you know the Joker you find in comics like you know the ha ha everything yeah, he, with Harley Quinn is like a colorful thing, but this one is really really dark. Oh, so dark! I know. It goes dark so. I was like really good to the point. It's really good. I was like yes. There's just I every, when I was watching it and the more things he was doing, I was just I found myself like yelling at my tv like yes like more of this like yes like just yeah. so happy like finally they're portraying yeah. this character in such a oh it's really yeah so good really well made yeah freaking happy that the dc stepped up and on doing this kind of stuff yes. man they hit it's, it it's like something new yeah they hit it out of the they park have, with that. they have like really good hidden gems of a character that can do well in let's say in cinematic universes mm -hmm. man i mean they have potential to become biggest marvel but now it's like it seems so wonky but you know mm -hmm. suicide squad it makes you think that someday they're gonna become marvel too you know in terms of cinematic yeah i like that yeah, yeah. i it because you know to me dc has always been darker than marvel um yeah, we're, I'm more of a DC fan. Me, me as like well. Marvel. If I if I had to choose, I would I would say the same thing. Um, but man, mm -hmm. that Joker movie they they definitely let their their colors shine. They really n hit it out of the park. Yeah, with that gone all out in that in that movie, it's mm -hmm. pretty wild. Have you seen it's awesome? Have you seen Joker Thread? I have not. Um. I really need to. Uh, I haven't just watched. Let's, it. let's end so the obvious. podcast right now. Go watch it. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right. See ya. <laughs> All right. I'm yeah. just kidding. Right. Um, I was gonna say though. Um, one of so Marvel did try to take a step into the dark, darker like um film mm -hmm. uh, category mm -hmm. with the second Spider Man like um. I don't, I don't know how to say this, but, like, the Andrew Garfield. Oh, the Andrew Garfield one? Yeah. So, they just straight up killed um, multiple of the characters. Uh, like, like uh, I, I remember too. I was in theater <laughs> when yeah. Gwen, like, dropped, and he tried to catch her, oh. and she died right there. And, like, dude, it that hit me pretty hard. <laughs> like, yeah, because that happened in the comics, man. That's when Mary Jane is... Yeah, Spider-Man's current girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. yeah but that... actually, um, 
It was yeah. freaking crazy. It's pretty dark. So since, you know, it, Sony that time owns Spider-Man, the Spider-Man rights, you know. Mm-hmm. They, don't, they don't have that deal with uh, Disney, Disney yet. So they, they quite altered things. But, you know, in the comics, it was more of a more of a bad bad kind of situation you know actually Gwen dropped in a uh, from a bridge and then like snap her neck there it's much more gruesome in the comic book yeah you know the yeah the cinematic version is quite you know, dramatic so it's quite yeah right it's sad when you were talking about Spider-Man I thought you were going to talk about the, the the this is my opinion but the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man the Sam Raimi films Spider-Man the first one mm-hmm. from 2002 Best, mm. uh, yeah. Toby Maguire, in my opinion, best Spider-Man. I don't you know, know. To be honest, I really like Toby too. I don't know what He's it like, is about Toby, but it's weird. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but that kid's like, got it. <laughs> yeah, it was like the weird kid. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think it's it's the nostalgia that 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 matters here, but it's like I still want to see Toby. Yeah. Have you guys seen the uh, the push for the Spider Verse? Like, um, the actual actors doing a Spider Verse thing. I have heard of that, and I correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard Tobey Maguire would be coming back as Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, I think so. That would be that pretty would be cool. So sick. Hope those rumors are true. <laughs> that would be no. very be- cool. People tend to <laughs> make a fake fandom, like oh, a fake trailer dude, too. Do you it's like like man? To the point is believable, man. The, you know how many times I've been tricked by that kind of stuff. I'll be on oh, YouTube. I'll yeah. see these thumbnails that Same. look real, and I'm like, oh yeah. no way! And then I'll look at it. I'm like, this is. This is fan made. I'm seeing scenes from movies yes. that I've seen. I'm like, what the? This isn't. I got tricked. Clickbait. It, it worked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like how we're in this movie discussion. Um, mm-hmm. But what do you. Have you. Either of you. Both of you. Have you guys seen the trailer for the new Batman movie with uh, Robert Pattinson as. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Wait, what, I freaking you love, love it. Me too. Oh. It's I'm gonna so, watch this while we're recording. Give me one second. Okay. Yeah, watch it. The new Batman, the the Twilight guy. I mean, the Robert Robert, Robert Pattinson, Pattinson from I Twilight. thought that was a joke. Yeah. No, it's no, dude. It's real, <laughs> and he looks really good. He really looks like oh. a Bruce Wayne, in my yes. opinion, man. It's he looks more dark. It, yeah. Man, it, dude, it's it's so the trailer is so like it looks like such a dark dark film. Yeah. Almost like the Joker, like dark and like gritty yeah, and gruesome, they, and they, yeah. Oh my gosh! When I saw that, I just how they go into <gasps> that line of grittiness and the, the post punk ish, like a Victorian vibe. Yes, thing, you know, yeah. Like the gothic Batman. You need to be dark, you know. Yes, you don't have to be bright or something. And Batman needs to be dark, yeah, mm-hmm. and like evil and scary. Yeah, and at first when I I heard that they were having Robert Pattinson play Batman. This was, when I heard this, I hadn't seen really any Robert Pattinson movies. I, I saw like the, one of the Twilights a long time ago, and that's all I really knew him for. Yeah. And I was like... I, I think they have a movie uh, with William Dafoe. Uh-huh. Yeah, The Lighthouse. It's really good. The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse. Yep. Yeah, I think it's, it's it's good. It is good. But I I was skeptical at uh, Robert Pattinson at first, but, you know, because he's a thin guy. Mm-hmm. I don't know how he would pull off Batman, but... I seeing the trailer it's like it convinced me man yeah it's gonna be good yes of course uh and, and and i started watching a bunch of robert pattinson movies and i'm like this guy is really good he is a mm-hmm. his his range of acting is so diverse he's so good and i it, yeah. it's almost like man twilight kind of almost ruined his career because people are like oh twilight robert pattinson sucks Actually. but it's like, no, take the time to look at these movies he's been in, these kind of smaller yeah. indie films, like The Lighthouse. He was in a movie like, called Good Time, which was really Twilight. good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, this guy is so good. And The Lighthouse was so weird. And Willem Dafoe, my gosh. I can't get enough of that guy. That guy's great. That guy, yeah. Uh, from Green Goblin to, you know, black and white film. Yeah. yeah. Like, so when I... The, the Lighthouse is in black and white, right? Yes. I haven't the, li- the Lighthouse though. is in black and white, and I believe it's... I, th- I, be- I I hope I'm not wrong, but I believe it's in four by three aspect ratio. I don't know. It's like oh, really old looking. It's like an old, yeah. I think I could be totally wrong. It might not be, but I own it. It's it's a it. it if anyone listening has the time, watch that movie. I warn you, it's yeah. weird. Uh, it's a weird one. You're gonna be sitting there like, what? <laughs> what am I watching? But 
it's really good, especially <laughs> if you appreciate film and stuff like that. You'll really appreciate yeah. it. I've seen some clips from the Lighthouse movie. It's like the Robert Pattinson like trying to smash things. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I was like that guy mm-hmm. has has the put like anyway that guy is really good. Yeah, no, no doubt. Without the Twilight tainting things, uh, like it's like mm-hmm. that guy can be Batman. That is a sick trailer. Is that a new Catwoman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who who's the main villain? The, uh, uh, the Riddler. It's right? probably uh, Hush or Riddler. I'm not sure. And I think people saying it's Hush. Oh really? I don't. I I don't know. I heard ri- a while ago. I heard Riddler. I'm not sure, to be honest with you, but I yeah, I did I, hear. Actually, I think it's Riddler too. I think it's Riddler because I heard the actor that's playing him is an actor by the name of Paul Dano, and I've seen him in movies before and. This is like the perfect role for that guy. He's Wait, like Paul a, Dano. Paul Dano. What does he look like? Um, have you ever seen a movie called There Will Be Blood? There Will Be Blood. It has Daniel Day-Lewis in it. Have you ever seen a movie called that? It's about like a an oil driller in like the eight like 19 early 1900s. No, I don't think so. It's good. He was in a movie with um uh Elijah Wood called Swiss Army Man. If you ever Man, th- take the, he- have time to watch Paul Dano movies, you'll see what I mean. He he plays like such weird characters so mm-hmm. well. He's like Joaquin Phoenix. Wait. Like he's he's weird and he plays characters so well. Man, he has the aesthetics. I'm actually googling him right now. Mm-hmm. So I believe he he's, has the looks, he's man. playing the Riddler. Um, mm-hmm. But my gosh, that Batman scene where he's in that, it looks like a warehouse and there's all those like thugs and he's just beating oh. that one thug down like, doo, 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 like oh, dude, he, he oh, wrecked yeah. it. Oh, like, I saw that. And I was like, yes, strike. I was like, Batman usually lets people live. He doesn't kill. But I think that guy's dead. I think there's no way that guy's not dead. Like, he, he's either dead or dying. <laughs> one of the two. He's either dead yeah. or dying right now. Mm. I know, dude. Ah, oh, It looks Oh, it looks good. Oh yeah. Any any like new Catwoman is for me. Yeah. I saw this thing uh recently uh about so the Batman movies have always been good, right? Like uh-huh. they I don't think there's been a single Batman movie that's like been bad. Mm-hmm. Um uh all of them is bad in my opinion. <laughs> the old ones? Yeah, uh, it's I mean it's a cult classic when it comes to Michael Keaton or yeah. the, the ones from Tim Burton, yeah. It's are the ones with out of the question? The ones from or, Tim Burton is that the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger in it playing the the fr- the freeze guy? Yeah, Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze. Doctor Freeze or Mr. Freeze? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, those saying all these like one liners about like getting cold and stuff. I'm like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. I don't know what you guys are talking is. about. <laughs> He's like, you were going to get a brain freeze. I'm like, all right, okay. <laughs> It's quite cringy, but you know, it works. And back in the day, it, yeah, so. back in the day, they're like, yeah. <laughs> The pun humor is the best humor. It, yeah. Mm-hmm. As we know from Adventure Quest Worlds, we're very it's familiar classic, with pun yeah. humor. <laughs> yeah. So much of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The Batman movies have been pretty good. Uh, Christian Bale as Batman. Yeah, actually. Yeah. I, for, I, I forgot that. I know. I've watched The Dark Knight mm-hmm. from, uh, who's the director again? Matt Reeves? Uh, no. Um, Christopher Nolan. Oh, Christopher Nolan, Matt Reeves is it and uh, the new Batman, right? I think, I think he's directing the new one. I think yeah, could be wrong, yeah. but I... Christopher Nolan is really good. You know, yeah, the Joker there too. Yep. I mean, yeah. The uh, that <laughs> the Dark Knight movies were the only Christopher Nolan movies that I understood and I was able to follow because all his other movies are so confusing. Like, he has, like, Interstellar, he has Inception, like, all these really, con- mm-hmm. Tenant, all these really confusing movies where I'm like, what is going it's, on? It's quite complex to, like, to follow up. I know, I'm like, what? Like, yeah. this movie looks good, but I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but, you know, the Batman versus Superman thing, it's quite, it, it haunts me. Oh, what, Ben way. Affleck as Batman? Yeah, yeah, the Batman versus Superman mm-hmm. movie, and the, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a hit. It's a miss for me. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan. It's really bad, yeah. I wasn't a big fan. Yeah. The Justice, I mean, the Justice League, the reboot thing, mm-hmm. it quite redeemed itself, but to the point, you know, yeah, I, I'm glad it happened. Yeah. But I think it's too early to do a Justice League movie, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. It didn't, like, quite build up the characters, like, doing 
individual films like a Batman film for you know Ben Affleck doesn't have a solo Batman film no and I th- right? I think he's done being Batman yeah. too I think he's he's done doing Batman uh I mean the physique though the brute version of Batman Ben Affleck actually fits uh, like a good dark knight yeah no nah, the yeah. Frank Miller Batman isn't he the really old like gritty oh. like really yeah. tough Batman yeah mm-hmm. that would be cool to see like a yeah. Frank Miller type batman in a film the you know the i think the he made the armored batman right i th- i Frank think Miller? so i think so that's where the origins of the armored batman are i think okay yeah because mm-hmm. what was i'm trying to remember there was a i saw a frank miller batman thing i think they made it into like a uh like an animation it was really good animation I, oh yeah i forget, I I forget that. what what it was called but it was it was good it, it, it's it, i think he has a fight with superman right i think so um mm-hmm. but man i i saw that batman i was like whoa i like this batman this batman's like scarily oh, gritty this is the batman with batman. the really big chin he's like huge and just gnarly looking i'm like yeah that's cool yeah. i like that batman <laughs> scary looking Batman. Very scary. So me and Alfred have been friends for like a year now almost. Mm-hmm. Um, and probably more than a year. But um, through this year he's done quite a few things. I am and... back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. So we, we were talking Hi. a lot of smack about you while you went and yeah. did whatever. But um, I was saying that me and you have been friends for over a year now I think. Um Really? I think so. Oh, happy friend anniversary then. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a while. Like it, time passes very weird right now because of the the whole situation that's going on in the outside world. Mm-hmm. But um yeah, there's been some different projects that you've been working on uh through the time that I've known you. And one of them and the reason that my brain was like, "Oh, you'd be a good guest for this show." You've been working with AE. How how has I've that been? Working been? with AE. What? How uh, has that been? Like, what's it like working with AE? It's it's really good. Yeah, everything everything's really good. Like, Ardix is supporting me. Alina is supporting me. The guys under this project is like supporting me. You know, this thing, despite the pandemic thing, the pandemic thing makes really everything so hard mm. because you know I've shifted place during these this whole project thing with AE. I tried to like move uh, houses to get internet because you know pandemic made everything difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, difficult for me. So yeah, my mom is in a different place now. Um, he, uh, she's in uh, my aunt's uh, apartment, I think, right now. So yeah, I I'm I'm here right now in my friend's place, so I can like work because there, there's like internet here and stuff, so I can like focus hmm. on doing projects. So it. It really become this pandemic really made everything really difficult and a bummer too. Right. It's really bad. Yeah. It makes scheduling really worse. Yeah. My country made uh, everything here so so difficult here because we don't know how to handle this type of thing. It's quite new to us in this uh, generation. So, you know, it's quite tricky to do this. Uh, I mean, to uh, to experience this thing is quite a new adjustment. So I think. It's, it's quite of a journey. Yeah, here too, it was kind of a cultural shock. Um, yeah. Just because, I mean, you wouldn't really see masks outside of hospitals here. Mm-hmm. Like, it was not normal for uh, non-hospital workers to have, have and wear masks. But yeah. with the pandemic happening, everybody had to wear masks. Yeah. So, I, I think it I was mean, kind of a big change everywhere in the world it's something that we need to like to adjust man it's like man this pandemic thing made everything so bad to the point i really we can't pay our apartment last year we we shifted places good thing my aunt has an extra place that we could like crash but you know i go to my separate ways because i have work and stuff that's why i need like uh, a place to do this kind of stuff stuff because i can't really focus on on a place that i'm not comfortable of you know you know what i mean yeah 
can you speak on how you work with AE? Like how how does it go down? Like do they me me and him do a product are doing a project as well. Um, usually I'll just send him uh, whatever I write up, and then he's like, hey, uh, he he has more experience, a lot more experience in this field than I do, so uh, he'll be like, hey, this isn't okay, this could be better, and mm-hmm. he'll tell me to fix that. But how does that go with it, like AE, like do they send you stuff and then like how does that go down? So about the script thing, um, I tend to uh, I actually show them few of my samples from a from my clients that do a professional comic uh, writing. I sent them some some samples so they could like uh have this idea and how this stuff works you know because uh scripting in general i think people think that it's like it's just like a storytelling thing like that but it's not you have to like separate like per panels and per panels and uh, the scenes and everything you have to make a separate description of them make us uh, some indication uh indication and uh characters that they're gonna say on that panel it's kind of like that it's quite uh more of a a separation from a story you have to put things into detail so that the artist or artist colorist or what whatever will follow up really you know so it will be like go with the flow i mean go not go with the flow it's gonna be like flowy or something kind of like that it's gonna be easy you have yeah. to you have to make it to where it's, it's like it's fluid. Really, yeah to be honest it's not really 100 percent done because i've been moving around so much that i can't really sit and then try to write you know yeah, because I really fetch my laptop. I I fetch my laptop in my in my mom's just to you know just to finish the story so I can do so I can do the comic separately because I work on my iPad right now so it's gonna kind of made made everything slow because it's really hard to do work on and me typing thing on the iPad so I grab my laptop and just do it there mm. I like that so I, I keep on moving around so I can't really finish the project. I'm trying to finish it as soon as possible so we can like do or release it or something. Yeah, I can't really put something into detail, so it's probably uh, illegal. <laughs> Not really <laughs> legal, but I mean, it's it's really a good experience though. There are the guys under the project really supports me, like Glysol, uh, Alina, Artix. Very good guys, man. Uh-huh. That's good. Awesome, awesome to work. Yeah, they've always like portrayed themselves as a very like wholesome company. That's like it just mm-hmm. a, a group of friends that are super friendly. You know. The funny thing is that Ardex once said this like seven years ago. What? What? 2010, 2011, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. 2011 was which I started doing art for AE. So he, he kind of, he kind. It's like a you know universal thing that uh, it's like faith that brought us together. It's kind of like that. It's, it's it's corny stuff, but you know. Uh, things happen for a reason. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It took them a while to get someone to do this kind of stuff. So, I mean, there's a lot of good artists, but they picked me, something like that. So I grabbed the opportunity, man. It's like, mm-hmm. really, this is like something of an achievement that I really, really wanted to get because back in the day, I tend to, to participate in some, you know, contest, the chaos contest, the... Uh, Christmas contest, I think the art contest. So I tend to get those bash as a collection, mm. kind of like that. It's like a dream working in this company. It's like one of my childhood dreams. It's really, ha- I, I'm yeah, I, I'm really glad that I, it it did happen. But you know, no matter if it takes you like a year, five years, or seven years, I mean, keep on grinding, man. Eventually, it will come to you. Kind of like that. Yeah, I think a lot of people like uh, that do work for AE currently have not mm-hmm. only been playing for a long time but like have wanted to work w- uh, like with them for a long time mm-hmm. so like a sub work yeah it's kind of cool that a lot of people do get that chance and are able to work like with what they've wanted to do for so long you know going back to what we said earlier if you could put any one like comic character into Adventure Quest, which one do you think you'd want to put it into? Ooh, that's Adventure a good Quest. one. Oh my god. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Thread. That was a good one. I like that question. Alright, so I, I made this fan art with Gravelin and Gravelin and Batman. 
in the sewers like it went to a uh you know it's like walking and then graveling is, was asking batman if i can join the justice league and then batman says no no <laughs> no briefly <laughs> like that have you seen that have you seen that art yeah you should yeah. Yeah, i've seen that one i want batman to be in the game that would be sweet it has these like Batman gears and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think there is a parody be... of Batman in um, Hero it's Smash. It's going to be probably Birdman. <laughs> Birdman. I don't know if you guys remember Hero Smash, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was one in Hero there's Smash. A... Wait, there's a Batman parody? Yeah. In Hero Smash? Oh, yeah. I, I don't I remember what Hero it was, Smash. but... There's got to be one in AQW. I mean, there's the there's the Joker uh, costume you can, yeah, you can have, so... There's got to be a Batman. I've been uh, playing a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh recently. I know there's a Batman parody in Yu-Gi-Oh, which is kind of really? crazy. Yeah. Um, I think his name is Destiny Hero Bubble Man. Oh, Destiny. The, yeah, I've seen that. The blue guy with the silver uh, armor, right? Yeah, but he's, that has the gun his helmet is like the same exact thing as Batman's. Yeah. Oh, it's Elemental Hero Bubble Man. the guy has a visor. Yeah, but the, it has like, the, the horns of a Batman. What's his name again? Elemental Destiny Hero, Hero Bubbleman. Uh, Elemental Hero. Oh, yeah, yeah. The guy with the g- blue and the silver guy. Oh, wow. What the heck? Yeah, it's literally Batman, but recolored. It's like an wow. alternate universe Batman. Yeah, it is. Yeah, his helmet looks exactly yeah. the same. And AE does the thing, I think, once a year. Like, they have a little comic book event where they put, like, superhero stuff into the game. Like Yu-Gi-Oh? No, no, no. I'm talking about AE. They... Oh, um, okay. They've done... I know that there's a Wolverine parody in the game. You got The Flash. Uh, Arlette made The Flash one pretty recently. Mm-hmm. Which it was... Who made the Deadpool one? Oh, yeah, the Deadpool one. I think there's a Deadpool one. The, you're talking about the the one from... What is... What, Ballyhoo? I'm not sure, but I think there's a Deadpool costume in-game. I'm I mean, pretty I've sure saw, I have I, it. I, I think it's called Hero yeah. Sponsors. No, it's not Hero Sponsors, man. It's like, it's real Deadpool. I think it's color customizable, too. Really? Why have I not seen this? I feel like there's a lot... Of, like, I feel like Deadpool has a huge following. Like, insane following. I feel like I have seen that in-game, actually. Now that I'm trying to think about it. Pool of Death. It's named Pool of Death. It's Pool of Death? Mm-hmm. Yep. I know, I know that they also did Captain America, Red Skull, Thor, Spider-Man. They have Loki, too. They do have Loki. Mm-hmm. They need to add Alligator Loki. Which, um, who's the Celestial guy? Like, the, the main guy. Which guy are you talking about? It, it, the entire Celestial story revolves around this guy. A-Ranks. A-Ranks. His name is A-Ranks. He made Alligator Loki. Really? But it's not released yet. I think you can view his tweets, but um, I don't think you can comment on them unless you follow him. Because some of his stuff that's, you're that's able to comment cool, on, some of it you're not able to fo- comment on. I don't know. It's weird. Let's see. What other pro- Like, what has been your most successful project that you've worked on? I don't know, but every time I finish something, it's, it's successful to me, <laughs> mm. I think. My first project is... It's basically coloring and stuff, you know. It's been released it's from an indie company in Denver. I think it's still up, though, but it has some sensitive stuff. I don't know if I, I'm able to talk th- that thing here. So, mm-hmm. my next one is from Dark Wave. It's a, a comic book company from uh, London. It has this uh, more of a, a Captain America feel to it, I think so. I really like that one. I made few covers to that company and made few uh, character designs and whatnot. I also made uh, Diner Thrashers from uh, Age Less Press 1 and 2, but just coloring and stuff. I really don't commit um, doing an, with, with inking because it takes a huge amount of time. It needs to be something that I'm really interested to so it can keep something like, you know, the passion burning until I finish that, uh, I finish the comic kind of like that. Yeah. The DC one is just for the forums thing. Mm-hmm. It's undone yet, so I'm trying to go back again when I have the time. It's not actually rushed. There's this guy. If you know this guy, he's named Jose Lito. He's a puppet uh, that does shows uh, in the US. He made a comic and I colored those. Oh, nice. I'm not sure. Yeah. That's pretty I colored cool. Colored those too. Uh, right now, aside from AE, I'm also doing uh doing work from from a guy in Marvel Upper Deck. 
the guy from Opera, Marvel Opera Deck uh, doing some uh, secret project, secret uh, stuff to do like uh, making GUIs and mini characters for the game. It's like a mobile game, yeah. Oh, nice. At least in the future. It's going to be a card game, kind of like that. It's kind of like those, those Yu-Gi-Oh! online thingy, but with cute characters. I feel like this is a a question that's asked between friends if you Mm -hmm. talk to them for any amount of time this question is going to come up but if you were a mutant or a superhero (laughs) what power do you think you would have and what power would you want to have and that that's for both you and lanky Oh, jeez. So you first. Oh, no, Alfred. <laughs> Why? Why'd you do this? I'm still me? trying to me think too. what power. I, I've always yeah. wanted flight. I think it would be super cool to have, like, angel wings or something. Because, yeah. like, okay, just to flex that you'd be able to have on other people just with those wings. Yeah. Dang, Thread. You put me on the spot here. <laughs> I don't get asked questions <laughs> on this on this show. You can do it. <laughs> oh, man. Of course you said flight. I was going <laughs> to... That's usually the one I go for, but I want to go for something different now. Um, Claws coming out from your eyes. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> um, I don't know. Invisibility could be cool because um, uh, you could just do a lot of mischievous things and no one can see you do it. Um, and probably like... I mean, of course it would be cool to have Sp- you know what? I-, I want Spider-Man. He's able to freely swing from his web, um, where you know, mm-hmm. all around the the city and stuff. And he's also very like he does a lot of flips and he's very limber and and he's strong. So he's kind of got like a lot of things mixed together that I like, like the strength mm-hmm. and um, you know, the the agility aspect of it, almost like. Almost like people that do like parkour and stuff like that. I think that'd be really cool. So I would go with like a Spider-Man type power probably. And I have to, I have to have the Spider-Man suit because I've Spider-Man always wanted suit. one, but they're really expensive to buy. So oh, nice, yes. So <laughs> would you make a home like made one like they do in the movies, or do you think, <laughs> a uh, homemade one like your aunt made? Like, like in one. the first one when when he uh, when he goes yeah. wrestling and he has like the blue pants and like the sweatshirt and a ski mask on mm-hmm. uh, i think there's a spider-man yeah, named ben riley uh-huh. that has like he doesn't have a proper costume but just a jacket in a long and a long sleeve i think it's kind of it kind of looked like uh, a baggy type of costume yeah you gotta start from there man yeah you gotta start jacket somewhere stuff, you know swing through yes yeah, swing through uh, buildings and stuff yeah you gotta see what works yeah. and what's comfortable for you but i would eventually want a skin tight spider-man suit because they're cool yeah that's cool yeah all right nice. we, we've said ours it's your turn i probably want time travel because i really want to go to like the 90s and something just go into a random diner and just drink coffee there it's probably me like a happy spot to me mm-hmm. you know like that yeah just just like a plain old tr- time travel that would be really cool actually mm-hmm. time travel would be it awesome. has restrictions too that you can't go to the future but you can just go to the past and like do whatever you want but it doesn't like affect everything if you come back to the present I like that yeah you can, you can do it whatever you want damn threat okay you got any more of those <laughs> <laughs> you gonna put put us on the spot again? That's like an interesting question. It was not that I can think of. Okay. Um, I mean, the, I I have another one, but I don't know if you guys will like even be able to answer this. Um, oh, try me. But Bring it on. if you could take any superhero's abilities and put them into a class for Adventure <laughs> Quest, <laughs> that like that that's like how Ooh. what superhero would you want and how would you implement it? Okay, I'm actually thinking right now. Go, oh, Lanky. It's your okay, turn. <laughs> <laughs> me, me again. All right. Um. Oh God, they kind of did that with Thanos. That oh, one called yeah. Infinity Titan. The Infinity Titan. Um. Man. Ah, oh, Thread. Make me really think. Stuff I've never thought about, and now I'm thinking of the hard spot. question. That is a hard question. I should just have you do the interviews from now on. You come up with hard questions. I'm going to have to cut out all this me going like, hmm, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to have to cut all that out. <laughs> no one wants to hear me right. thinking. My They can hear the gears grinding in my head. There are some that would be like easier to implement, like um, Adam Warlock, like yeah, for help example. Me out, he's like, Why oh. would you put Adam Warlock 
Well, he's just like a magic man, right? Like, he just does magic, so that's easy to implement into, a, like, a fantasy game. I mean, Adam Warlock has a soul stone. If you want uh, the, the real Adam Warlock, he has the soul stone. That he, he could, like, put people inside of his, like, you know, the gem on its forehead mm. and like that. But it basically, Adam Warlock is like a vision, you know, vision from uh, the vision, Age of Ultron vision, kind of like that. Mm. that. Shoots laser. That's what you want for a class? That would be pretty dope, but... Hmm. I think the one yeah. that I would want to put in the most probably be the Hulk. I think that would be a sick class. Ooh. Ooh, Ooh it'd be like a nuke dealing class. He's so powerful. So strong. Mm-hmm. So I think it would have nuke implements, but also have like the regeneration like from, um, I think, was it Planet Hulk it was the movie that showed off his regenerative abilities? Um, uh, not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Like the old Hulk, or I don't know that all of the comic characters have a, a lot of different. I can't think of the word, but they have a lot of like different versions of themselves. But regenerative abilities enough to where he can die, but it's gonna be hard to kill him. You know, yeah, kind of like a tanker Ooh, class I that see. also has some nuking capabilities. You know, I. We talked about it earlier. I'd probably have like a like an Aquaman type class, like a water based like fighting class. Do we have a water class in the game? I don't know. You're the I'm you're not the sure. class man. Oh, we have Ky- Cryromancer, but that's ice. I don't think there's a water type yet. Not sure. Boom. I th- put it in. I think LM the Draco Mancer one has a water ability. I like the Aquaman class can like a summon like you know the old uh you know you know that old Aquaman cartoon that cartoon that yeah, Aquaman rides with this fish you know yeah yeah makes it oh like when he's riding the dolphins like that. with the reins yeah, yeah yeah dolphins kind of like that yeah and then he could do like all the animations would be really cool and like obviously like water based like he would like clap his hands and like two like tidal waves would come and like crush the enemy and deal damage like it would just be cool like water-based yeah. animations aquamancer yeah and he would and he would do he would deal extra damage to like enemies that are in the water like in that one map where you go like underwater and you fight those like uh man what are the what are their names you fight that like kraken monster like underwater monsters it would deal more damage to them because he's has oh, he's more yeah, of an advantage yeah. underwater. I mean, I guess we have the pirate classes, but like that's not water. That's no. on water. Yeah, we don't we don't. There's not a single water. There's ice classes. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know why there's not water. There's fire. There's yeah. That's weird. Is there wind? Boom! Come on, AE. Let's go. Not Bring sure. it in the game. Yeah, we we need Aquaman, dude. Call it an Aquamancer. Oh my God! I just came Aquamancer. up with a name. <laughs> Oh man, God! Stealing it right from Alfred's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, the only water ability that I can think of in the game is Ulaf's torrent. Summon the water prime's power and hit your foe with a crushing jet of water, which has a slight chance of stunning your opponent. That is the only water thing that we have in the game that I know of. I think I might be unless I'm like something. skipping one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I might be onto something. Wait, did Alfred answer? Oh wait, wait, what? <laughs> he's like, he's like, dang it, he called me out. <laughs> Rat. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking of a uh, Magneto type class. Ooh. Ooh. We, you know, the implements like force fields and you know the that magnetic blast and stuff. Ooh. Mm. I like that. That's like a good shield. Yeah. It doesn't like get affected by enemies attack in like a specific you know, time not sure if that's op or not they and can you know deal long range very very long range yeah mm-hmm. they have some of that stuff implemented already like shielding and damage blocking so i'm pretty sure they yeah. can make it happen it's got quite you know i don't know if it's going to be classified as like some sort of support but I think it's more of an offense thing. It's like more of a, you know, if Magneto is that overpowered and strong. I mean, Magneto in the comics can can magnet the moon, you know? Yeah. You know that? That's He's crazy. Very Magnetize powerful. The moon can like, yes, yeah, Omega class X-Men is very powerful. I like that. I mean, he can make a very pretty OP type, uh, very technical uh, offense type class. Mm-hmm. Kind of like that. 
We're almost at two hours right now. Holy crap. Yeah. I feel, I feel I can feel it. It feels like we're like winding down kind of now. Was there anything else you wanted to ask Alfred or Alfred? Was there anything that you wanted to talk about? Right. Wait, maybe we could like talk about something like outside this whole situation. Probably we can like talk about are, do you believe in aliens or some sort of stuff? Okay. <laughs> to make things very like a, a weird but interesting things. So, right? you know, it's up to you guys. I mean, like, I'm still down. Try to segue into that. Yeah. Okay, so in your comic um, that you're doing mm-hmm. for AE, it's called, can we say this? Can we say what it's like, the Elseworld stuff? Oh, the Elseworld stuff. Yeah, I can. I, yeah, we can talk about Elseworld stuff. I have, like, plans. I mean, I have plans and wrote some, like, quick summarization about what's going to happen. But it's not, it's not 100% going to be like confirmed it's going to be the next thing because maybe after this project it's going to be something more different or more of uh i think it's i'm still going to follow you know the what arctic's going to the next the next thing is but most likely i mean i hope hopefully i want i want to implement this kind of else world stuff you know mm. an alternate universe because i've i've been planning to make a Thanos ask for Adventure Quest World. It's like gonna be more of a end game kind of stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be really cool. It's gonna con- uh, it, Yeah, it's gonna be. It has some like a uh, time travel to it. Time travel, uh, going to the past, getting someone, going to fight some something in the future. I mean, the present thing. Yeah, it's it's gonna be wild. You know. There's this like uh some a boot like infinity rings that I've made up. It's gonna be I mean infinity stones. It's gonna be like these rings that they're gonna collect to earn those kinds of cosmic powers. It's like one ring that can summon voidlings. It's gonna be more of a uh, it's, uh inclined to a more of a territorial type of stuff. It's gonna be a celestial void darkness chaos this ring's gonna be it has like an origins to it it's uh more cosmic cosmic form like uh gods and whatnot it's it's wild it's gonna has cosmic powers and everything like arctic's gonna wield it but he can't uh, he can't handle the amount of power it's kind of like that Mm -hmm. it makes him chaotic it makes it makes him unstable it's gonna like uh, it's gonna be an epic one i'm still gonna write this thing off but i actually summarize it and everything kind of like that also made a few a few uh concepts of titles like j6 task force adventure quest world zombies at your door and dracath rebirth kind of like that so the j6 one is kind of like uh more of a Guardians of the Galaxy st- stuff, more of a Power Ranger, and you know it's gonna be quite uh, more of a dramatic approach to it. Uh, it's gonna be fun, funky, and everything. It pops. It's gonna be more of a Thor Ragnarok ish, mm-hmm. pink and blue, everything. Yeah, that's gonna be pretty. Imagine cool. like uh, J Six is like Peter Quill, just like what if he's gonna be like this epic guy that you know goes around the galaxy finding bounties and everything man this is like epic stuff if you think about it yeah it is that would fit j6's character really well yeah it's something that needs to have more of a western influence because you know if this thing becomes like if this comic things thing becomes big in the future this thing's gonna become like more of a you know ae has a has the greatest potential to become like a comic a really legit comic book company if you think about it yeah oh. and they have a lot of like stories the, that they've yeah. done over the almost 20 years that they've been doing stuff i think um og adventure quest came out in 2002 so there's uh, yeah, a lot of yeah. stories that have gone on for the 19 years mm-hmm. that they've been making stuff <laughs> yeah i mean the passion is still there until t- until right now you know you'll never know the comics can be on shelves you know yeah it's true you never know Speaking of cosmic entities and going around collecting bounties, do you mm-hmm. think aliens? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. This is the that was that, I that was the segue. <laughs> Man. Wow. Aliens. That was. I freaking love aliens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you first. Right? Okay, me first. <laughs> I'm always first. Yeah. Do you believe in aliens? Okay. 
aliens. Like in like in the let's say like, like cosmic terms. Okay. Do I? Th- Not yeah. yeah. Do I think? <sighs> do I think aliens exist? Um, I I do, I do think that there has to be something else out there. Um, mm-hmm. because I mean, that's such like the classic answer. Like, come on, think about it. Like there, we can't be the only ones on this, in this universe, yeah. but the universe is large. It's large. Man. Um, billions of miles. And, uh, there's, there has to be something else, but I yeah. also, I mean, aliens could be like microbes. Yeah. I also don't think that you know they're your classic like the people think of aliens like green little guys yeah, the green one i don't think yeah. that i think that um they are something so un obviously something we've never seen but so unusual to us that it mm-hmm. would be too hard too too uh it'd be something greater than us like it'd just be too much for us to understand like what it is um yeah and i don't think that if they do exist i don't think that they have like the same kind of um like maybe like self-awareness that we have and like the same um kind of human you think they're npcs yeah like the same kind of human like thought process you know like i don't think uh-huh. that if they are out there i don't think that they're going around saying I wonder if there's any other, uh, you know, things exist. around here. Like, <laughs> I don't think it's like that. Gosh, Mickey, I don't know if there's another alien. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like that. I, th- I think it's, oh, yeah. I think it's, uh, I think it's way, way beyond our comprehension. Um, yeah. And I think that they are just on a totally different level of existence. Yeah, probably another plane of existence or probably another dimension. Yeah. Um, and I'm thinking maybe on other planets, there might be some, in, like, in, like, to us, they'd be, like, insects, like, they're, who knows, because they're in space, they're probably not even insects, probably something we don't even know what they are, but something kind of <laughs> like an insect, like, there's got to be other life forms, yeah. um, not necessarily big, but maybe small, mm-hmm. um, but I, I do think it's possible that there could be, um, bigger life forms out there Mm -hmm. but at the same time i don't feel that we have the need like that there's a need to go try to find them like we got we we still have this we still have our whole planet that we still don't know much about there's still so much for Mm -hmm. us to learn especially the ocean man exactly like uh they're still discovering things and you know Mm -hmm. um so i think that we have enough on our plate as it is like just having a planet of our own and uh Mm -hmm. yeah but yeah sure i think that there could be other things out there there's another interesting thing that i heard uh while watching another youtube video Mm -hmm. that uh i can't give this guy credit because i don't remember who he was um like what his channel was Uh but Mm -hmm. he said that the only reason that we assume that aliens would come like take us and dissect us to learn more about us yeah is because that's exactly what we would do if we found aliens that's the only reason that we think that like why we're why we are afraid of aliens like that that makes sense because like humans throughout time yeah have always done that it's like a self-preservation thing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh that's interesting i never thought of that that's a that's an interesting take on it Makes sense. So, like, aliens could, like, literally not care. Like, they could find out we exist and be like, oh, well, they exist. Cool. You know? Yeah. Whereas we, if we found out oh, yeah. another alien, like, intelligent life form existed, we'd be like, yo, we're going to learn all about this thing. You know? Yeah. We're going to dissect it. We're going to see how it ticks. We're going to try to learn its language. You know? But they could just not care. Like I said. It's true. They could not care. They could just be like, oh, all right. Yeah. All right. They've probably seen so much so. other stuff that we can't even understand. So, mm. you know, to us, that was be like, okay. <laughs> or, okay. or however they they'd say it. The I don't know. <laughs> it's it's going to be boring. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, humans are... Look at these cavemen. They hit rock. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, if, if if they see us, probably, like, if they're, like, from, like, a million sort of light years away, that's probably gonna uh, look at us differently, right? It's gonna be, like, a primitive Earth, yeah. mm-hmm. probably, yeah. because of, you know, time. I'm not sure, distance and everything. I don't, I'm, I'm not really good at this, but I think that's the reason. I mean... Th- they can actually look at us in real time. I mean, they're... I mean, there has to be, like, for, like, I don't, okay, I might sound really stupid to someone who knows a lot about planets, but to me, like, a planet is, like, a planet to me is, like, that ha- that thing has to be, like, a living thing, you know, because... Mars had life yeah. on it. It's, like, but the planet itself, like, it has to be a living thing. It's made up of a, a bunch of things. It has, to, it's, like, that in mm-hmm. itself is, like, a living thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting, though, if you think about it. It is. Another thing, too, we always imagine other planets to have, like, plants and stuff on them. But some planets are just completely barren, just floating space rocks. I mean, plants could, like, exist, probably, if given the right conditions, like, same as planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Maybe, probably, Mm -hmm. even if it doesn't support life, but maybe plants. It's like one, one, I mean, it's probably one thing that could wow scientists in the future if if that's probably going to, you know, if there's plants, you know, everything, there's oxygen, kind of like that. Right. Maybe there's someone living in this planet. It's something that, you know, if, if you think about it. Even here on Earth, there are some plants that people think are alien. Um, like, for example, uh, a lot of the Asian players that I talk to don't know about the existence of blue bananas, even though they live right next to where they're being grown. Like, um, Hmm. I know that you live somewhere in Asia, but I don't know if you live where they grow the blue bananas. But Uh, Blue bananas. I think we have that in in the northern part of 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 Philippines, I think. Okay, but you know about the existence of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm aware. No, nobody that I've talked to besides you has known about blue bananas. Like Lanky, do you know about I've blue bananas? Seen, yeah, some yeah, I know about blue bananas before. But how but my the real question is why did you just start asking people about blue bananas? How'd you get into that conversation? Like random players like, "Hey, do you know blue bananas exist?" I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that if it's blue bananas, but I think there's a blue there's blue banana. But I know there's blue bananas, but I mean, I've seen some <laughs> stuff that are from like bananas. Here 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 in my place, I have like I have these like really small banana trees, you know. Yeah. Mm. It's like same as tall as me. Oh, I mean, and has this like different shapes, like I mean, size of my thumb. Uh huh. Kind of like a banana. It's like weird, man. It's like bananas are weird. <laughs> bananas just, are very weird. Just, bananas are weird, just, especially considering they're radioactive. I'm just what? There, there's there, there's like uh, red bananas too. I think. What? Yeah, I'm not sure. Radioactive red bananas. Why are wait no. bananas are radioactive? All, all bananas well, are radioactive. Look it, look it up. Yeah, I didn't know that. Wait, I'm. There's also. Uh huh. Go ahead. I used to be like super into plants. Uh, I like thought you were gonna say I used to be super into bananas. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, no. There's red bananas. Darkon hates bananas. Uh, me, on the other hand, I think bananas are all right. Yeah, it's it's cool. <laughs> bananas it's are cool. cool. <laughs> uh, but there's another fruit that um, it's like literally the most deadly fruit in the world because uh-huh. um. They just fall off of trees and explode. <laughs> and explode. Like, yeah, <laughs> and they send shrapnel <laughs> flying everywhere. <laughs> what? What the heck? Yeah, uh, and like the the fruit itself, it's like a hard shell with spikes on it. So okay. if you're anywhere wow. in the vicinity of where this fruit like goes off, you're dead. Like you're not. <laughs> coming Man, back what a that. way to go out. Man, that's dangerous. <laughs> well, what if that's how? <laughs> you went out <laughs> de- death by fruit that, man like people talk about falling coconuts but that's not the big problem the i'd be so mad if like i saw this fruit falling and i'm like oh no this is not how it happens <laughs> this podcast is all over the place how do we get into the conversation <laughs> bananas dude i don't know <laughs> yeah it's called the sandbox bananas. tree <laughs> sandbox tree mm-hmm. oh. are there videos of like the fruits exploding i don't no. Is it too? Is it like? Is it 
that much of a devastation of a blast for people to film it? When oh, fully the mature, they scary. explode with a loud bang and fling their hard, flattened seeds at speeds of up to Man, 150 the, the miles tree, per hour. The sandbox tree is pretty large. 150 mile an hour flying seeds? Over 60 feet. No way. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. That could kill, man. I mean, coconuts can kill when they hit. Yeah, obviously, but like fatal stuff. It says that. Whoa, the tree looks. Cr oh my gosh. I'm looking at a video now. The spikes on this tree look insane. Whoa. Whoa, it, say, like, it yeah. says that it's, uh, it's also present in parts of Tanzania where it is considered an invasive species. Really? Yeah. It's invasive. The The fruits that grow on this thing look like pumpkins almost. Yeah, I just clicked on a video and I'm looking at it. They look like a like a brownish dark pumpkin. Oh, they're, they're really tiny. Too. Like scary stuff. There's a guy taking a picture like right next Why to it. Why does that exist? I don't know. It's like <laughs> there's just some things on this point where I'm like, well, why? <laughs> why does that exist? That's one of them now. Is it my question? So everything, like, grows over time to adapt to their surroundings, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what surrounding did this plant have that it had to make its fruits explode? I kind of want to see one explode in person. Just hide somewhere. How does nature do all of this? You know? Yeah. What in it makes it explode? It's like ra it's like random stuff. It's like uh, sabotaging us humans, like playing games on us. I'm gonna make a tree that explodes, man. You know, like that. Yeah. It's the gas that's in it there. It should be like that. It's that much and pressure. Scary. I don't know. That when it fall, it must it. So it must be a very brittle like pumpkin for it to fall and just break and explode. The spikes though looks very scary. There's some plants up in the northern U.S. where um. Mm -hmm. They literally create purple dye, like the the seeds on them, uh -huh. and it splats like a little like paintball. But you don't need to use as much force with it. So we used to throw them at each other at kid as kids and uh, dye all of our clothes purple. There's another one too where it has these like hook things that it sticks to like clothing. Oh. And we used to throw those at each other, too, like, and get them stuck to each other's clothes. Like sand spurs. Maybe. I actually have a funny story about sand spurs. I don't... That's one thing. I don't know why those exist. I don't know what those do for us, but... Um, yeah, when I was younger, I my friend had a whole bunch of sand spurs, like, growing in his front yard. And we would pick oh, them up and, like... Things. We'd throw them at each other. They'd come on, like, a long, like, stem kind, and we'd throw them at each other. And when the, the other person wasn't looking... Um, and I threw it at my friend one time... Like, I, I like, really, like a baseball player, like, I took it back and I, like, threw it really hard at him. And he's kind of, like, right in front of oh me. Oh, my gosh. And at the same time, he turned around, like, to look at me. And it, like, stuck to his top lip like a mustache. And hmm. it was probably Ooh. the funniest thing that I've ever done on accident. It was probably the funniest thing I've ever seen. So funny. He was laughing, too. But, uh. <laughs> he just it, had these this the thing mustache of like sand spurs stuck to the top of his lip and it was probably the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. Sand spurs grow here and they get stuck in dog paws, which can be yes. very, very harmful for the dog because it can like mm -hmm. get in there and keep going deeper. Mm, yeah. So. Yikes. And then get infected and stuff. You know, I also learned that the other day I learned uh that spiders, um I think it was I think it was the daddy long leg spiders. And I don't know if this is true because I didn't look it up, but someone told me this, that the daddy long legs, um, they're like one of the most poisonous spiders, but they're, they're so weak. They can't puncture our skin. So they don't, it can't harm, really? they can't harm us. I don't know if that's true, but I heard that and it sounds believable. Yeah. I keep on the like, capturing daddy long legs. Like when I was just a kid, yeah. a kid, yeah, I keep on like, uh, um, getting them out uh, in this tight like location and stuff, and trying to like uh, inspect them, like I'm grabbing their legs and look at them. Uh, interesting stuff. Yeah, there's all kinds of weird things that even seem alien to us on this world. How do we implement a class that uses exploding fruits? Okay, a class that uses the sandbox tree fruit. Oh man, yeah, no, I'm, I'm completely joking, but uh. <laughs> Sandbox nomancer. 
Everything's just a no mancer. The blue banana mancer. The blue banana mancer. A fruit mancer. Yeah. He just has a bunch of different exotic fruits. He has exploding fruits. <laughs> he has blue and red radioactive blue bananas. bananas. <laughs> <laughs> he just reaches into his bag of Man, fruit. The scary side of Mother Nature. Yeah. All in one class. Yeah. And then he also has his auto attack is just he he just throws sand spurs at you. That's like his auto attack. <laughs> and the hash, just, that, and the, that's gonna be epic. It's just a, <laughs> plant ninja. Yeah, and then his radioactive plant bananas ninja. is like a damage over time attack. Like they just start getting, you start getting more and more <laughs> radiation from them, more health going away. You get radiation poisoned. Yeah, you get poisoned. Yeah, exactly. The nuke that you cast is the exploding fruit. Pretty wild class. That would be a wild class. That'd be nuts. Very random one, too. <laughs> People would be like, no one asked for this class. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> who who did this? Took them by surprise and like, wow, what the hell? <laughs> and, it's just, and it just like has really cool animations, like the Great Thief class. Like, it just has really awesome yeah. animations, too. <laughs> like, the best <laughs> in the game. And you're like, what the heck? Did you know that pineapples grow on stalks? No. Like corn? Really? Yeah, no, I didn't know yeah. that. There's red pineapple. Oh, stop. No, no way. It's probably not good to eat. Why is it red? It's the fruit punch flavor. Okay, it's it's a fruit punch <laughs> flavor. That's how they make fruit punch. Okay. Now, here's the question. Do red pineapples go on pizza? Uh, yeah, probably. Probably. You know, what's funny is one of my, my coworkers pointed this out to me a while ago, and I never really thought about it, but it's true. Uh... So I live in Florida and I've lived here my whole life and um we are the orange state like we're known for our oranges um uh-huh. and I've I've driven all around Florida and I don't think I've I've might have seen in my whole life I might have seen one orange field and it wasn't even that big like I, where are all the oranges I'm, I what? I thought I sat down I thought about it, I'm like you know what you're right I've never like seen an orange field ever maybe once why are we known now for oranges? i think about it my, my state's known for green and red chili but i've never seen a green and red chili farm see what i'm saying uh, that's i think weird. they're lying it's to probably us fake. like it's literally the chili capital of the world yet i don't think i've ever seen chili grown here wait where are you from again new mexico the roswell crash mm-hmm right around there oh nice wait you live in the outskirts of roswell or i uh, you mean like uh I, mean, I, I, I don't know I don't know if I'm like, like talking gibberish or something but when you say New Mexico it's gonna be like this uh, it's like gonna be like a wasteland I mean not, not no wasteland but it's like a plain old place you know like a very deserted place or it's just probably like in the movies I've, I've been seeing so there's like two spots in this entire state that have population in them oh outside of that it's literally mm-hmm. like what you imagine the wild west to be like like red dead redemption yeah oh cool like um so have you been to that alien diner thing oh yeah I, i've been to roswell roswell's pretty cool they have um Wait, you've been to that diner yeah oh <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, Man, it's right I here to, i want to go that's there that's cool when they come to the states i want to let's go, go there. meet up with thread let's go out to eat at the diner oh wow yes. the nuclear yeah, science museum's here stuff. too that's have you ever been there so wait it mm-hmm <laughs> nice oh. Is, is, is Area 51 from like in New Mexico? That's Nevada. Or a different... It's in Nevada, oh, which Nevada. is right next to it. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, it's Nevada. Nevada. But we can't go there. Why? It's illegal. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's legal. Yeah. Of course it's illegal. It's illegal. There's no tours or something? Like... No, it's it's military. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There, there's a bunch so of videos of people trying stuff. to go, but they always <laughs> fail. And there's, like, military up 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 in the hills yeah. like, waiting for them. Like in a in truck, yeah, something like it's that. It's kind of funny that you say Pretty that because there's though. um. I think they can open fire. Yeah, within the vicinity, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. so there there's a mountain right next to where I live, where they store um, nukes. Like they literally right. store the missiles and stuff in that mountain. No way. And it's been a thing for a while uh, in this area that people will go jump the fence and get shot at and then just run away like what for fun hell? for fun yeah <laughs> oh <laughs> wow, good old american fun getting <laughs> shot at level stuff, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> <laughs> okay 
So we're going to meet up with Thread. We're going to go eat at the diner. And then we're going to go find yeah. the missile mountain and get shot at. And oh then run my back. Gosh. When I go on my That's hikes, I'll regularly kind of see them like shipping stuff into there through the military cargo. Dude, that must seem like, like a movie. What the heck? What the hell, Dude, man? That, so- that sounds like a movie. <laughs> like, it sounds like you're seeing something you're not supposed to. <laughs> they they have it right next to a residential area. Okay. So that's their fault if they don't want that to be seen. Yeah. But the this state is known to, like, hold a lot of missiles, and I'm sure that's not the only spot that they hold them in. There was literally, like, a military raid, like, this week. I didn't have my driver's license until this week uh, because I live in a city. I've always lived in a city. Uh, when you live in cities, you kind of don't need to drive anywhere because there's public transportation. Either that or um, taxis, Ubers, you know, uh, all that stuff. Yeah. So I, I've never needed to drive. But with me working out and joining the military, I, I kind of want to be able to work out on my own. Because when I go work out with other people, there gets to a point to where one of us wants to be done. It's either me or the other person that wants to finish. And sometimes I'm not done when the other person wants to finish. And sometimes they're not done when they want to finish. Yeah. So uh, I'm thinking about going to the gym by myself sometimes. Just so I can get however much I want to get out into that workout. Mm -hmm. So I need to get my driver's license. And... After I got my driver's license, there was literally like a military raid of somebody's house. There was 20 plus cop cars. CSI was there. Um, some CSI? other crime investigation it's unit was there. Uh huh. And then and we drove down further, this, like down the street, and there was a like military raid. If you, like. You know the the cars that you see where, like in the movies, and then like 20 military men get out of it, like fully armed? like a clown car. They just hop out. That happened. Yeah, (laughs) I saw that happen. Like, they were all carrying AK. I I think they were AKs. Thread. Uh, But like the black military issue. Oh my uh, god. Rifles. And they're all in military gear. All had their padding on. Face shield. Helmet. What the hell? Everything. Are you sure you're not in a movie set? Yeah, or something? are you sure you're like that? Sounds like something out of Breaking Bad. No, no, no. Yeah. This is on the news. It was on. The, well, I mean, they they filmed Breaking Bad here in, in the city. Oh yeah. But this was not, and and there is a Netflix studio here too, so they they do film stuff. But this was like legitimately on the news. What what had happened was there was a robbery, uh, an armed robbery, mm-hmm. and the the police had to show up. And they ended up catching everybody, but some of the police did get shot. I think four policemen got shot. Jeez. I was just trying to get Taco Bell, right? Like, I was driving down the street, and the Taco Bell was right in the middle of all of this. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so I, I drove into the Taco Bell and went to the drive through and they're like, no, nah, we're closed right now. I was like, what, are they being held up or something? Like, they're, they're, they're robbing the Taco Bell <laughs> as I'm trying to order like my five uh, five dollar nacho box. Nothing interesting like that happens here, at least where I live. I mean, we have cartel here. We have yeah. I don't know what else we have here. I know that cartel has a really big influence around here. Aliens, probably. Yeah, aliens. yeah we have aliens. Uh, we have nukes, military. Uh huh. Transformers. Man, it's like a pretty wild in your place. Yeah, man. it's the wild west, dude. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's like well, literally the Wild West, like there. modern Wild West. <laughs> oh my gosh. I used to live in like the, the bad part of town too. And uh, mm-hmm. like every night you'd hear gunshots and stuff. And like police Ooh. going off the, the police helicopters um, or the news helicopter. I used to walk around with a chair leg and a knife just because I thought I was tough. You know, <laughs> like a chair leg I and a knife. <laughs> I don't know where <laughs> I got a chair leg, but it was it was like a it would serve as a pretty good club. Yeah. Like how do you carry that? The, the chair leg is in my hand, and then the, <laughs> the knife would have been tucked into my uh, what the hell? I my leg waist. Put it like uh, underneath your clothes or something, man. It's like no, no, no. You you just walk around like you walk around. You're just, with your, like... you're just brandishing a weapon <laughs> like just out in the open. <laughs> Well, yeah, people would get jumped. That's you gotta, gangster, you had to be armed. I mean, I get, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Like, thank God I didn't have to use the knife. Uh, Wait, but... does that mean you had to use the club? I did use the oh, club. Oh, no. 
I, I carry a sword now, but like I don't. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I don't what? carry like it. an anime character. You carry For a reals? sword around like on your back. No, no, no. I I carry like um... it just it just appears and every time he's angry. <laughs> I I carry like a European style sword with a handguard and everything. Like a whoa! Wow! What the hell? It's like Assassin's Creed type stuff. Hold on. Let me unsheath it. It's okay. Wait, well, you can like carry around like a rapier? I like... the metal. <laughs> no, no, no. Man, like, it's like on. pretty random stuff right What is now. going I'm on? Just, what I, happened to like this four, episode? It's like 48 a.m. here. I don't know, man. I carry around a sword because there's like kite wings and stuff. <laughs> I can't take, like... can't take that seriously, <laughs> dude. Like... <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I like I hear it moving. You're like okay, so I carry around this sword. <laughs> I can hear the bell crunching each other, man. Mm. <laughs> oh, oh my god, thread. Yeah, I'm gonna send it into the little group chat. Crying. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I thought I thought she joked. Oh, dude, no, <laughs> I like a legitimately carry sword. sword. <laughs> No, like well, Europeans, that's, that's a medieval sword. sword. That's like an actual sword in like Skyrim, dude. You're not kidding, yeah. man. <laughs> like they, there's legitimately animals that will kill you around here, so <laughs> I have to carry it. And how do you carry that? It's like a big sword. Well, I, I mean, I'm a big dude. Like I used to, I used to bodybuild, so. It's like, yeah, I can I can one hand this if I want to. I, I can't believe it right now. It's this 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 is too like random. Man. <laughs> let, me, let me sink everything first. I usually only carry the sword <laughs> when I go like outside <laughs> with my pets <laughs> because like that's when <laughs> you need it. <laughs> but like if I'm if I'm alone, like. <laughs> I've been talking about this for a while. Like, I want to fight a mountain lion, like, so bad. <laughs> what are the chances there, like, a uh, uh, mountain lion that you'll encounter along the way? The, there's, there's a mountain lion that's been killing people with pets, like, around here. That'll see that happen. <laughs> like, there's... Like, sometimes you'll just find deer carcasses. I can't take this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, oh my, my god. god, dude. <laughs> oh. <sighs> All right, I Hold on, I need now. a breather, dude. Hold on. <laughs> like, okay, so I used to wrestle animals too. Like, <laughs> for part of my job. <laughs> what? <laughs> because. <laughs> what are you saying right now? So. What are you? <laughs> You're probably. What an alien, are you, Thread? <laughs> Uh, it was animal grooming, and uh, <gasps> some dogs and cats don't want to be groomed. And uh, <laughs> one of them was like 200 pounds. Uh -huh. Like, this thing was notorious for eating other animals. Like, and it was a dog. Like, this thing was huge. It's a it, dog. it ate a TV. It ate a vehicle. <laughs> what? It, it ate it's somebody's it's cat. What? Two dogs. <laughs> Dude, this doesn't sound real. No, no, yeah, it's real. I mean... It's real. It was a huge <laughs> Rottweiler. Like, I've never seen a Rottweiler that Is... big. Wait, wait, did I, did I hear it correctly? You said a, do a TV? <laughs> yeah, the, the dog, dog ate a flat screen plasma TV. It sounds like a fever what? dream. What is How? happening right now? Uh, I'm assuming they just left one day and left the dog out, and the dog was like, yo, I'm going to eat this TV, and then it ate the TV. What? <laughs> I, I, I can't I can't right now. I, I what I. But um. So. I, I don't know what to do anymore. I was I was like Man. responsible for keeping that thing back. Okay. Because the dog. Yeah. Because it didn't like getting groomed. So, um, one time it did get the groomers like, and it was while I wasn't there, but it got the groomers like head inside of its mouth. And just kept its jaw what? there, but like didn't bite down or anything. <laughs> what? But what the hell, man? So I think with that experience of trying to hold that thing back, 
I'm pretty sure that my chances against a mountain lion would be realistic. Like, I think that I can take a mountain lion realistically. Dude. Okay. Oh, my brain. <laughs> okay. I can't believe this is like... Wow. This is so unreal this, right this, now. This is, this, yeah, this is so unreal right now. Or, um... Okay. What? I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this, but you know a Green Hornet? What? A, the uh, bug? Well, no, no, no. The the oh, comic. The hero. Yeah. Oh. I, I used to groom their dogs. The uh, what? The writer. <laughs> He's like, huh? That. I used to groom their dogs too. Oh. Wow. Oh yeah, I get it. Okay. We had nice. some. We had some famous uh, like clients, and I don't think I'm allowed to talk about a lot of them. But uh, that one was pretty chill. That's cool. Their cat was like, like one of the. I think they only had they had one cat and two dogs. So the dogs were like really cool. The cat, however, I'm pretty sure was Satan and bodied into like cat form. Uh huh. Um, multiple of its claws had come off in my skin. Mm. I still have scars to this day of that cat's claws. You're like the most interesting man in the world. I was like I mean, everything you, you said was you so showed like showed that sword. Yeah. Everything you said was so, like, manly and cool. I mean, I, I don't think so, because that's just how I grew up, I guess. Uh-huh. But, like... Mm -hmm. The sword, though, is cool. I mean, how... Yeah, when you... I think everybody I, should I, own I a still, sword. I still can't imagine how you'd, <laughs> you would you carry that thing. Okay. I, I usually put it on my shoulder. You ha Oh, you have a strap or something? I, it comes with like a, a hilt. Like, oh, I could okay. put it into, my, like, my waist, but I choose not to do that. I just carry it over my shoulder wow, wow. The, like resting uh, on your shoulder or something like that mm -hmm. the blade is dull oh, okay uh-huh so it's mostly just to but scare things we, I, mean, I mean that thing is heavy right it's probably yeah, about like 15 to 20 pounds you can swing it around pretty easily the the way you're supposed to use this type of sword is you're supposed to swing it by using the butt of the end and put pressure onto that so that it swings really quickly mm. Mm, i see I haven't like played a sword for a while, but my dad used to have this like World War Two swords. I think it's like a Japanese origin mm -hmm. one. Mm. Yeah, I tried swinging that, but it's re really, really heavy. Oh yeah, some of the some like, of the swords are pretty heavy. Down. My dad yeah, has. Um... They use the weight to to cut things, right? I mean, they use the sword. And he need needs to have like a weight to like uh, have this amount of like. Uh, uh, let's say some has this weight to cut things easily, right? Yeah, uh, a lot of swords are more heavier, like on the like on the blade side, so that it when yeah. you swing, it's mostly the force coming from the sword and not from yeah, the you. force. Yeah, that's a word. Mm -hmm. My dad has um, a ceremonial navy sword, like navy mm -hmm. officer sword. That's cool. Which I thought was really yeah, it's like a little rapier almost. Now you can sell it on like. Pawn stars or something? No, uh, they're oh, yeah, they're here. very common. Oh, they're I thought they're like rare. Yeah, all officers are, like, in the navy. navy. Swords are given to every like it's like tradition, right? Yeah, it's like a tradition thing. Yeah. Which I don't. Why was that? So when America was formed, we already had guns. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So why do we give swords to people if we had guns? I think it's just a whole tradition has to be like a tradition thing some sort of a trophy or achievement no one fights with swords no like it's just not a practical weapon if there's guns <laughs> you think that i, I mean yeah you're, i don't i don't have a sword so i wouldn't know you try but you swing your sword and you dodge the bullet and you slice the enemy off i'm like yeah. still crying from my outburst of i'm really like after yeah it wasn't like a. It's pretty random. It was a. Ran man. It was just because everything was so random. I just didn't expect any of that. It, everything caught me off guard. It was yeah, like it was like I carried around a, the sword. a chair leg and a knife. I'm like, oh, okay, and then you're like, now I carry around a sword, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and then I heard it, and then he showed a picture. I'm like, wow, that's cool. Picture, and you're like, yeah. yeah, I used to wrestle animals, <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> What? Well, that's why I don't carry the sword when I'm in the mountain. Is because I think that I can like legitimately take on the mountain lion. What with your bare hands? You need a you need a weapon. So my yeah. game plan is to tackle it, and then try to bite it. Well, right. Wow, 
I mean, that's a dangerous animal. How would you do that? Yeah, he's so much more powerful than you. Yeah. Like, the jaw, the jaw of it is, like, I think, I assume it's, like, very powerful. I, I mean, so, I I used to play football, too. So, I, I've taken down people that are, like, three times my weight. Yeah. So, I think that if I can get a good, like, hold on this animal, I think that I can just throw it, mm-hmm. too. Well, I hope... That's, I mean, they're going to throw this thing, or I'm going to bite it, one of the two. Well, I hope that never happens, but if it does, you got to tell us about it. Yeah, I, I've seen I've seen stories. I mean, I've seen videos that uh, people like going jogging and like randomly jogging jogs at this like a remote location. Then the, there's like a mountain lion like following. Yeah, the girl I think yep. is a girl. Yeah, it's pretty pretty wild, man. It's like something that that's, that will like literally scare you if you're in that uh, you know situation. Right. An, w- one animal I don't think. I could, I know I couldn't it take on as a kangaroo. I've been watching a lot of kangaroos. Kangaroos are scary. Dude. I'm more scared of a kangaroo Man. than I am a mountain lion. I've been watching kangaroo videos recently just because one got recommended to me and I just kind of fell into a rabbit hole. Those things are nuts. Like, they they look like bodybuilders. They're so ripped. And I, yeah. I saw a video of some guy, you know, in Australia filming. He was in his house and he was filming the window because a kangaroo kept kicking his window and the guy's like like get away like get out of here you know he's like stop kicking my window he's just sitting there like punching the window i'm like dude that would scare kangaroos are no joke and i've also heard that they'll wait in the water like they'll kind of like get underwater a little bit where their eyes are above the water and they'll wait for creatures to come in the water so they can drown them what the hell kangaroos are vicious yeah, I've seen this one too, like a kangaroo choking uh, this farmer's yeah, dog. Yeah, and the guy and walks the... up and punches it, right? Yeah, punches the kangaroo. Like the kangaroo <laughs> kind of knocks itself. I know back, he's yeah. the kangaroo's kind of like, whoa, what? <laughs> like you're the first person that's ever tried that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that's pretty random. It is random. The only the only vicious creature I have here is alligators and. That's it? Like alligators and crocodiles, like that's it. Those big lizards, that's about it. Mm-hmm. Um now people wrestle those regular yeah. regularly. Like on T V so. and stuff. Like that's a regular animal like to wrestle. Alligators? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're doing shows too. Yeah. Like a circus and stuff. Mm-hmm. Tr- trying to like uh I wouldn't do it. Uh, but put yeah. Their hands on their I mouth. wouldn't do it. Alligators is they're too crazy. I saw dude, alligators are they're mean to their own kind. I saw an alligator, like, mm. a video of an alligator, like, bite another alligator, like, on the arm, and, like, bite its arm mm. off. I was like, dude, come on. Why'd you have to do that? Probably hungry. They're mean. Dude, and you know what other animal I found out was ginormous that I just didn't realize the sheer size of it is a moose. Have you heard them? No. Like, an, uh-huh. like a, what's a, uh, oh, a yeah. moose is like a, an elk or yeah, a moose? Well, a moose is like a, they're like a, a ginormous, like reindeer almost, but like they have bigger, their horns yeah, are actually. like, not like spiky. They're like weird. They're big. They're huge. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize hmm. that. I saw a, a video of someone filming a moose and they're like 10 feet tall and really big. I didn't know that because obviously I don't have any moose here, but. I was like, what mm-hmm. the heck, man? I didn't realize how yeah, big a moose yeah. was. I think I've seen that that moose, like, walking in the highway. Is it in the highway? Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's pretty large. Like, uh, <clears throat> it's like two cars stacked yeah. on top of each other. It's yeah. enormous. And that tall, man. I mean, here we have, like, panthers, the Florida panthers. Um, but you, the, you don't really see them. I don't think there's much, many of them left. But they're like, you don't yeah. see them much. Like probably in Wakanda. In, yeah, unless you're like on the highway and you're going in the, like in the middle of Florida where there's a bunch of woods and forests and stuff. Uh-huh. Like you, you're probably not going to see one, but we have them. Are you a fan of wrestling? Uh, I mean, no, I never really did watch wrestling. I can never, I never got into it. No, oh, okay. I thought you because you you live in Florida. I thought you went to like WrestleMania no. or something. Uh, uh-uh. but there are a lot of a lot of wrestlers retire here, like, around mm-hmm. where I live. Um, I've never met any of them. I've seen Hulk Hogan twice. Never, I've never shook his hand, 
but I've met him twice. Uh-huh. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, there's a beach near where I live. He has a, yeah, yeah, I think he has a shop mm-hmm. in, in... Clearwater Beach. He owns a lot of that area. There's a lot of Hulk Hogan stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So he, he's around there sometimes, but uh, I thought I met Hulk Hogan one time. I could have swore I did, but it turns out it wasn't him. It was someone that looked just <laughs> like him. Uh, it was weird. I was at like a, I was at a party because yeah, my friend was, he was, at, we were, he we got invited to this like house party and he was DJing and like, kind of playing music there, and so I just uh-huh. we just went and um, is that some random person's house? Like a pretty nice house too. Like it could have been a Hulk Hogan house, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I had to use the bathroom. And my friend was with me, and I'm like, you want to help me find the bathroom? Because this house is huge. I don't know where it is. Asking all around, and people pointed us in the right direction. They're like, hey, it's in this person's bedroom. Just there's the bathroom. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird. I don't like going in someone else's bedroom, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So my friend went, and I'm like, okay, I'll stand here in the hallway. In case someone asks what we're doing, I'll just let them know what we're doing. And someone told us to come here. And this big guy, ginormous man comes over and he's like like what are you doing and i'm like uh (laughs) and at this point like i was looking at his face he had the he had the white hair like the mustache and everything the bandana he was ripped and super tan and i was like uh yeah uh you know just there's the bathroom and he's like no you can't can't use that bathroom so then my friend comes out and sees him and he's like oh like uh hi and um he started to like kick us out kind of and mm-hmm. i turned to my friend I'm like dude was that hulk hogan did we just meet did we just <laughs> hulk hogan touched me like did we just Man. i think i think that was hulk hogan and we were asking people i'm like well, is that hulk hogan they're like i think so i'm not sure but then uh we eventually got told it wasn't hulk hogan but i thought it was hulk hogan and it was a really scary experience. Dude, this was probably the best episode we've ever recorded. This was, like, literally yeah. the best episode we've ever recorded. It was great from the beginning. Pretty awesome, man. It's like it's like Joe Rogan yeah, stuff. That, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It was. <laughs> it, it was. This is uh, Adventure Qu- Cast, The Experience. Yeah, The Experience. <laughs> it really was. It was so funny. I had so much fun during the... Uh, this was a great episode. Yeah, I haven't had a good laugh from like some time now. Yeah, I'm glad we could all. It made me. It yeah, it kind of lifted my soul up, up yeah. a bit. You know, it's kind of. Exactly. I'm glad we could really all awesome. enjoy that together. That was so much yeah. fun. This needs to happen again. We need Alfred. We need to have you on again sometime. Sure, man. That was a blast. Can, like, DM me anytime. That was an absolute blast. Can talk about aliens. Yes, we'll just talk about whatever. It was great. All right, guys. That was episode, what is this, 12? 12, yeah, episode 12 of AdventureCast. Probably my favorite episode, honestly. That was so much fun. It's a long one, almost three hours. Uh, So I hope (laughs) if you guys are listening and you stuck around, appreciate you sticking around and and listening to to our, our interview with Alfred and then our discussion about bananas and fruits and aliens and swords and... (laughs) All that cool stuff. So Yeah, random, <laughs> random stuff. stuff. Pretty wild. <laughs> so much fun. Um, but all right, guys. If you want to, you can follow AdventureCast on Twitter at AC Live Podcast. And you can also follow um, my main Twitter account at LinkAQW. You can join the Discord. There's a permanent Discord link on the Twitter. Um, come and hang out in the AdventureCast Discord. It's a pretty fun place. And if you guys want to join the AdventureCast Guild, let me know. Uh, and we'll hop in game and make it happen. But uh, Thrud and Alfred, you guys can go ahead and plug your your socials and whatever you want people to see. Thanks, guys. So um, if you want some comic stuff and everything, uh, go visit my Twitter at Alfred Cabillon, C-A-B-I-L-L-O-N. I'm Thrud uh, at Thrud10 on Twitter. Uh, That's really the only place that I'm relevant. Uh, <laughs> have a good one. Instagram is really inactive right now. Oh, and in the comments, we're definitely going to do another episode with Alfred. That was fun. So if you guys have anything, any deep discussions <laughs> of anything you want us to talk about, <laughs> like give us some random facts about fruit or anything. Just any anything random that you want to hear us talk about, we'll definitely uh, mm-hmm. definitely talk about it because that was so much fun. I, gah, I had so much fun. Yep. I, I haven't 
laughed that hard in a while and just had that much fun doing something so i thank both of you for 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 that so thanks thanks for having me guys this is awesome but all right guys we will catch you in the next episode of adventure cast have a good one have a good one guys peace Thank you.